Good morning, everybody. England 263 for three overnight, having won the toss and chosen to bat first. Joe Root, in his 100th test match, is unbeaten with 128. The big headlines read something like Joe Root blunts India with a new command performance. Yes, a day to savour for English cricket fans and for the team out there in uh, Chennai. Good morning. Welcome to TalkSport and specifically to TalkSport 2, of course, where we are for most of the day. Uh, please download the app. You can find us on uh, DAB, but search hard or get that app. Get it, get it, get it. Too many mates of mine waking up and saying, can't find you. I tell them, get the app. Alongside me, Darren Goff, that Goffy was a day to savour. Oh, it was a special day, Mark. Uh, really enjoyed it. I mean, we're all nervous. It is. It's a magnificent tour, isn't it? India, England going there against <laughs> arguably the best team in the world. I know the rankings tell us it's New Zealand. But when, when, you, when you go out there and you're thinking, first thing, win the toss. Please win the toss. They win the toss. Then we're all nervous in case we lose a couple of early wickets. But the way England went about yesterday, building the foundations of a great day's cricket. And Dom Sibley, I know Joe Root's getting all uh, the plaudits, and rightly so. It's his 100th test. He got a fine 100. But let's not forget, Dom Sibley played an absolute blinder, didn't he, Mark? He was fantastic. He did 286 balls he faced for his 87 before he got out LBW to Jasper Brummer for what was the final ball of the day, though there would have been three or four to come, I think. Um, he faced, as I say, 286 balls. He was out there for 382 <laughs> minutes, Goffey. I mean, that's six hours, 22 minutes. That serious kit hit just 12 boundaries, but he hung on in there for his captain. And he's a very good example of what Chris Silverwood and Joe Rood have said they want, isn't it? It is. Um, it's an example of uh, getting the personnel involved with England who can bat time. Be patient try and build in innings and let players that have got more natural flair play around them. And the players we're talking about are players like Zach Crawley and Dom Sibler. This is the personnel he's brought into the side. But you've got players like then Joe Root, we've got Ollie Pope, you've got Josh Butler, who are all fine, Ben Stokes, who are all fine stroke players and can keep the scoreboard ticking, but they need the anchor. And anchors Dom Sibley. If that doesn't work, they've got Rory Burns, although he played a poor shot yesterday. I'm sure we'll get on to that. And they've got Zach Crawley, but who was unfortunately injured in the first two tests. But everything's in place for England to do well. I've got a, a big question for you when we come back after this package, which I hope goes some way to summing up yesterday. That is short, it's wide, and Sibley hammers this through backward point, and that will run away for four. Boom, and it's off it goes. Burns, who dances down the pitch, oh. and drives in through wide mid-arm with some elegance, you have to say. Four more to the total. Who do you reckon last had a haircut, Rory Burns or you? No, I reckon Burns, Burns has got a terrible lid at the minute. Terrible. And that will be 50 for England. Now a reverse sweep, and he can't be serious. He is, he's gone, reverse sweeping. It's a big breakthrough for India, big breakthrough for Ashwin. Disappointing for Rory Burns. Oh, LBW is it? Yes, it had to be. Nips back. Brilliant. Really good from Jasprit Brumra. Dan Lawrence has to go. And now roots forward and drives nicely through extra cover. Oh, he's down the pitch and drives wide of mid on almost perfectly for four. Flicked away through the leg side, beautiful shot. Oh, Dom Sibley, so good, so good on the leg side. And that will be the uh, run that takes Dom Sibley to a very, very hard-earned half century, in fact. He's uh, come back for a couple, so he goes to 51. Ashwin into him, oh, that's a glorious shot off the back foot. A punch through extra cover, and it's gonna go away for four. What a shot that is from Joe Root. Back-to-back -back boundaries. If India win the series 2-0, 2-1, 3-0, 3-1 or 4-0, then it would be India through. So, um, Sorry, I missed that, Mac. Can you just yeah, run through that again? He's, 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 he's lost me. Can somebody pass me another sandwich? 50 for Joe Root. And his 50th 50 in Test cricket. Oh, my goodness me. Isn't that a joy to watch? Root eases into a cover drive. Something from the classics there. Oh, blimey. I think, I think there's a cat just walked in the room. <laughs> what a shot that was. Beautiful. Four more to the England captain. That takes him into the 90s. He is cruising at the moment. Round the wicket is Washington Sundar. Yeah. And he works it off his body with great simplicity. 
Joe Root in his 100th test match. He's captain of England today, kissing his helmet and knowing that he's on the march for his country. A magnificent performance. Here's a five. Oh, oh. strong sweet late in the day from Joe Root. He's hit it beautifully. Oh, my goodness, it's gone all the way. He's and it crumb. looks like someone <laughs> shot him as well. He's got crumb. He's hit it for six and he's gone down. Oh, it's cramp in the left calf. Ow, ow, ow. Here's Jasper Boomer. Oh, big in swinging Yorker. And it's an LBW appeal. The finger's gone up. Ooh. What a delivery. Suddenly, Jasper Boomer finds some swing. Oh, my goodness. Dom Sibley has trapped on 87. <laughs> Well, you could sense uh, Neil Manthorpe's shock at that LBW at the end of the day. Um, when I called that Joe Root 100, uh, I talked about the simplicity with the shot that took him to the 100. But actually, simplicity is at the base of all of his batting. So you have to bowl at a guy who's almost perfect at the moment, technically. And then at the other end, Dom Sibley, who just won't be moved. That's not easy on a flat deck, is it? Even for a bowler of your variety and skill. Yeah, I think we they know the basic the way Dom Sibley is going to play. It's going to be the same every time he goes out and bat. Um, he's just going to try and wait for the ball to come into him and clip through mid-wicket. Um, they could probably uh, stop him scoring in certain areas if they really wanted to India and just frustrate him. But I don't think they would frustrate him because that's his character. But with Joe Root, I think no matter... He, he assesses the pitch conditions very, very quickly. He's a very, very clever batsman. And he came out yesterday. He was very watchful. I said that first 54 deliveries uh, for him to get to 12... And then after that, the way he went about his, uh, his innings was superb. Playing all around the wicket. Kept this sweet shot, actually, Matt, in the, um, in the bag, didn't he? Really, against Ashwin. Because Ashwin tried to ball a fuller length to him. And so he just played him through mid-wicket. Played him down the ground, off the back foot through the offside. And then when he got in, he started sweeping. And it was a terrific, terrific masterclass of spin. Playing no, against spin. Nice summing up, Goffey. Uh, Jared Kimber is not only here, but wide awake. Um, which is not easy at this time of the morning. Um, I note that uh, there are only seven batsmen who have made hundreds in consecutive three consecutive test matches in Asia and only two Englishmen before Joe Root Alistair Cook and Kenny Barrington um, we are seeing a little golden patch aren't we I mean, definitely. It, it's funny that Goffey brought up the sweeps because he's so famous for them and there's been so many articles about his sweeps of recent times. So I, I just had a look at the stats, Goffey, and, and you're, you're, dead, you're dead right there. 37 runs from 17 sweeps yesterday, which for it, it, you can tell what a productive shot it is, but he didn't play it that much. He played it when it was perfect. He played one slog sweep and he hit it for six. You know, and he played a couple of reverse sweeps. One was a top edge, could have been caught, but he played a couple of them when he needed to move the field around. So it was a very clever... Uh, um, batting performance when it when it comes to what shots he used and when he used them and he played 26 drives and they got 29 runs and 17 sweeps uh, and I'm including reverses in that and they went for 37 so it shows you what a, an important shot it is the sweep shot can I ask you Jared did um, one thing for you probably to find out as we go into the, the morning session is but Ashwin's lens to root were the fuller to Root than the were to Sibley because I think it was a plan from Ashwin because he'd seen that Joe Root had swept so well in Sri Lanka but he actually tried to bowl it fuller so he wanted Joe Root's natural length for him to sweep and that's probably why he didn't. Yeah, I mean, we could check that. The other thing that we noticed in, um, in Australia was that Ashwin bowls a lot higher than other. He's quite tall, but also he's got a very high arm action. And so if you sweep, a lot of players get top edges to him. So it might have been a reason that Joe Root didn't sweep him as much. But I think you're right. I think he might have bowled fuller, but we can look at that for later. Yeah, and, and maybe with his overspin that he used so much yesterday, looking for the, the top edge too. Um, Root's runs in Asia are remarkable, more than 1,700. Now, I understand he's played a few more tests than, than the other great players of the modern era. But even so, if you go ratio and look average, his average is 58 and uh, his uh, strike rate is very good too. He always... Uh, I talked yesterday about tempo. He always maintains a tempo. Very rarely that a bowler dominates Joe Root. The interesting thing yesterday is the first ball he came in and there was a ball on the length and, and Lawrence had just been blasted out, hadn't he, by Bumrah. And straight away what Joe Root did was is he defended a ball into point and took a single. And that is his, I think that is his 
biggest skill in test cricket is he doesn't allow the bowlers to bowl at him for long periods of time and if that's that sort of tempo that you're talking about he's kind of always scoring and always moving so if you look at him Kane Williamson Steve Smith it's very hard to get them on strike for five six balls of an over because they're always off and so he's always scoring and his scoring rate was so good it, it, a really interesting thing about the strike rates was that Sibley played the sort of innings um, that Shea Pajara has been playing and Indian fans have been absolutely ripping Pajara apart and yet you see yesterday if the other batsman at the other end is playing his normal game it works perfectly doesn't it absolutely I, I've seen an interesting quote from your mate my mate our mate actually a, a form of a face and voice of talk sport uh, Sir Jeffrey Boycott I like it if you can keep the love of the game Joe you'll make 200 test matches and become one of the all time highest run scorers ever to have played test match cricket well, it will, won't it? I mean, you only have to look at the way he's playing. I think he went through a spell, Joe Root. I remember in New Zealand, um, um, and he was talking about really working on trying to hit the ball, stay straighter, because he was felt as they were falling over a little bit, and he was trying to hit the ball more straight back past the stumps towards mid on straighter because he has that habit sometimes of flicking and if you saw some of the field settings to him yesterday on the leg side that's the way they were trying to get him falling over to bum rack, slanting into the right-handed batsman but he didn't he held his line his his body his balance was absolutely superb and he hit the ball as straight as he had to at times and it was a fantastic uh, master class of batting it uh, it really was against seam and spin. And, and that's what was impressive about Joe Root's innings yesterday for me. Right, let's throw it forward a bit because there's another headline I saw. We must try to score six or even 700, says Joe. I mean, I, I hope, in a way, I hope that England don't think too far ahead of themselves. Equally, I hope that that sort of ambition signifies the fact that the team are thinking big. Well, it does. And, and we, we talked, didn't we, uh, yesterday about uh, the, the problem is India on the last tour there when England went there was scoring. England was scoring 400 and then India were going on and getting 600 and they were still losing games. So when you look at the benchmark a bit, let, listen, if we could get 350 min or get 400, you can't do that in India. We've seen the conditions. It's pretty flat, isn't it? Let's be honest about it in Chennai. That pitch played really well. England have got the best of the conditions, batting first, not much spin, not much bounce, not much pace. It looks like Dom Sibley had so much time playing on the front foot. Those six studs were right down the middle of the pitch. And um, I think, realistically, England are thinking, yeah, we've got to get minimum 500. I think that's what they're actually looking at. Players are making their way to the middle. One thing that Joe Root said last night, I, I thought was particularly interesting when we interviewed him. It looks as if it might have been a good toss to win. And we all know that a toss to win in India is very important to win the toss in India. I just thought he said it as if to say, there's no doubt in my mind that, that this pitch will really begin to spin. Say third day, not necessarily second day, but by the fourth, if we've established an advantage going into the fourth day, we ought to be able to exploit it. Yeah, great. I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, I think first innings for both teams is vital. I think any team that struggles in that first innings is, is basically out of the game, I think, in the, especially on this pitch. It will spin. And when things happen in India, they happen very quickly, don't they? So, yeah, day four, day five, I expect it to be spinning. Uh, there'll be a lot more rough outside the book with mm. the bowler's foot marks. So it'll be interesting. Then Stokes is out there with Joe Root. He's making a fresh start, and so too must Joe. We've seen Joe get out the next morning on a few occasions in his test career. We're with you, obviously, throughout the whole day. Andrew McKenna and Neil Manthorpe, two fine men and fine callers alongside me in this role. And Steve Harmison, the former England quick who won so many test matches for England. Gareth Batty, excellent spinner for uh, Surrey and also for England, a master of insight, particularly into the the technique of the game, the tactics of the game, and Goffey himself that make up our team alongside Jared Kimber. And so we're ready to go. Joe Root unbeaten with 128 in that innings, a strike rate of 65, which uh, on a slowish pitch is pretty good. As I say, he took it to the opposition. Yeah, go on, Goffey. What it's like going out in the middle on the second day when you've got 128 runs on the board and you're not out. <laughs> I've never had that. I've never had that enjoyment or thought or feeling. You threw it, you threw it away yeah. in Australia, you see. Go, going out, 128 yeah. not out. You it could must have gone be great. big in Australia. 
Um, okay, Gareth Batty and uh, Steve Harmison join me now. And uh, Jasper Brummer with a new ball who struck a laid in swing to Dom Sibley last night. Ben Stokes on strike, two slips a gully, three in the covers, a mid wicket, a mid on, and a long leg make up an orthodox field. Here's Bumrah, and there's Stokes solidly in behind, actually a half volley. And had he been in for half an hour, he'd have probably pumped it straight back past. <laughs> but what are you looking at, Goffey? Same for, for someone like Ben Stokes. Um, it's obviously a big occasion for him. Another cricketer that's been rested out in Sri Lanka. Not much practice. Been in quarantine. Had probably a couple of days practice. And the modern day cricketer. It's right here on show. He's straight into a test match well, in Chennai against one of the best yeah. young bowlers in the world. Yeah, well, he's, the, of course, one of the few that hasn't had any cricket recently, like uh, Jofra Archer is another. Uh, Bumrah again, bowling round the wicket, stuttering with that run-out. Reaches the crease now. Big long arms as levers, and uh, it's left alone by Ben Stokes. Good morning to Gareth Batty and to Steve Harmison in no particular order. Gents, you well? Yeah, very well, Mark. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, let's pick up on Goff, what Goffy said. I, I, 128 not out. What a feeling that must be for the England captain. And listen to what you're saying, and it'd be interested in Bats's take on this and talking about threes and fours and fives and six and even seven hundreds I actually think it's time the, on, the, on this wicket if England can bat 140 160 overs I think that's huge for, for what's going to happen sort of second innings in the pitch deteriorate this start's important against the new ball like really important that bounces a little more than the others and carries through outside off stump to Rishabh Pant who had a pretty good day actually overall yesterday except perhaps down the leg side to the spinners uh, Neil Manthorpe has decided he's too hot and so stripped off the upper body to the torso a man who runs many a mile many a day and looks splendidly fit so too gareth batty still playing of course uh, would you like to get your hands on a cricket ball and bowl on this fourth day pitch very good morning mark and everybody listening um well let's wait till we get to the fourth day and i'll make that assessment then at the minute it looks like a very good batting surface um but the flip side to that is India need to strike and they need to come hard at England early doors. They need to make this first session pay if they want to have a foothold in the game because as, as we go further into the day without the wicket column being affected, England really do take a stranglehold in this game. Yeah, we often talk about the first session of each day as being important, setting out your marker. Uh, I think this is, is a good example of that. If it's India's session, they're very much getting themselves back into the game. And England might panic a bit about that. That they'll feel, probably, that they need 500. And Root has, as I say, spoken of six or seven. I, I, I think one has to be careful, as I say, of getting too far ahead of yourself. It's going to be uh, Ashwin who's going to bowl at the other end from Jasprit Bumrah, the off-spinner. You might think that's odd when you've got a brand new ball, but it's pretty usual over here, particularly on the driest surfaces. Ashwin gets extra bounce with a new ball, often uses the seam too to get it to nip away not only spin in so he's, he's a, a doughty competitor with the new ball some spinners bats a the, the little nice forward block from joe right out the middle of the bat some spinners wouldn't want to use the new ball would they yeah it's the, it's the lacquer that you get on the new ball it's almost like a waxy feel uh, which makes it slippy on the fingers different with a kookaburra ball but an sg ball which is used in india is similar to a duke's ashwin again oh so that's slightly front on action round off stump and Root as he did often yesterday leans into the ball gets his front knee bent and his head over it and then just at the last minute opens the blade to find a single in the space between extra cover and point he really picked that gap a lot yesterday didn't he more off the back foot than the front foot but he did yeah I thought he, he batted his angles were beautiful yesterday I thought the way he played especially in Sri Lanka the way he played spin the angle of spin the amount of spin that he was getting to play with the spin to manoeuvre the field to manipulate the field uh, he's just carried on from that and he did that yesterday because the difference between Sri Lanka and yesterday there wasn't as much spin so he had to get foot like out further towards you know to more towards the ball to smother it to get it in the gap which made it even I thought even an even better innings than what he played in Sri Lanka a slip and a silly point for Root uh, uh, forward goes uh, Stokes and that really is more like a little in-swinger uh, even at a, a sort of gentle in-swing pace no problem for Stokes to be half forward and defending it again with the middle of the bat it made, made the right sound and went back down the pitch didn't trickle off an inside edge or anything 
A nice relaxed stance. Stokes taps the bat between his legs and he comes forward further this time and defends into the offside with a nice body shape. I think just to add on that sort of lacquer that you get on the ball, Mark, Ashwin uses that to his advantage. He's trying to hit Ben Stokes, the left-hander, on the pad here a bit. He's trying to get the ball to skid a bit more with that lacquer. He's not always looking to spin it big. This time, the ball's leg stump. Stokes works it almost as if he'd thought about attacking it and then just pulled out of it and just knocked it, really, down to mid-wicket where there's no run. Stands now leaning almost to putting his body weight on the shoulder of the bat. He begins to tap it. Now he lifts it and waves it about stump height. And we see a gun barrel straight bat in that forward defensive stroke. So a maiden over for no a single eye. Sorry about that. Oh, Jared, sorry, I apologize. Go for it. It's all right. I'm under, the big, under your big screen there, so it's hard to see me. Uh, Stokes in Asia um, against spinners averages 30. Against off spinners in Asia, he averages 17.8. And for his career, he averages 20 against Ashwin. And the off spin thing is generally because his bat comes from an angle. We talked about this with Dom Sidley. Um, it's something, I was just watching that over. He actually looked like he was coming a bit more straight to straight rather than coming across. So yeah. I think him and Sibley, uh, it's quite clear England would have all the same information that I have, so they've been working on it. So you know he did a lot of work on that when Lyon exposed it a bit. Nathan Lyon, the Australian, and, and got better, didn't he, towards the end of the tour, understanding that the back path was really against the line of the ball. Yeah, if you remember, Lyon beat him a lot outside off stump, but the difference was he didn't get the leading edges and the other things that led to his dismissals. Bumrah again, uh, hair cut very tight at the sides. He's a slim man. And he can bowl real quick when he gets, gets the wheels working right. It bowls on a good length at off stump. Root is forward, playing the ball really late. I mean, it came right to him under his nose. Just to cover off the, with the Stokes and playing off spin, from a bowling point of view, you stood and you bowled the ball and you watch his finishing position. His left leg sometimes kicks out after he's played the shot, and it's like a second line of defence. So if you have nicked it, it might catch your left leg and defuse the ball, but that affects your back path. Because as soon as that right leg, it pulls your hip, and actually then you do come across the ball, you open yourself out a little bit more, as opposed to saying very side on and having a very straight back path. Two sixty four for three. After a fine day yesterday, England must consolidate to begin with against this new ball and build again. Oh, that's nicely played. Full ball, very straight, and worked away. Actually, there's a man back at square leg now, so there's a sweeper out there realizing Root's threat off his pads. Just a single for that then. Um, Gareth, we can certainly expand on, on that. Um, the best probably the best defender against spin I saw was Jeffrey Boycott who we mentioned or Sir Jeffrey we mentioned a little earlier and he did that quite a lot uh, particularly against the ball turning away from him because it helped him rebalance and be softer with the ball so as you go with your left foot and bat and pad together in those days much more than now where you go back to the old days of uncovered pitches and lead with with your bat because of DRS I'll just come back to that in a second Here's Boomer again, 265 for three. And uh, Stokes thinks about cutting, but the ball just follows him a bit, comes back and cramps him. And he pulls out of the cut, and he sort of only half defends and just prods it gently to uh, square cover. And so the, the left leg leads, and then just as you're getting to the ball, particularly if you've taken a big stride, and you're worried about the bounce mainly, more than the spin, he'd let his right leg come round, that right hip come round and it would give support to the balance. The upper body would still be very sideways on, the elbow still very high, and then the right leg becomes the thing that secures the balance and, the, and allows you to be soft with the dispense and not push at the ball. You're nodding as if I might have got that right. <laughs> Here is Bumra again, and uh, a, a defensive stroke that from a ball that didn't bounce much actually, but it, he played, played it fine, no run. Yeah, and I think that, that sort of technique would, would have been developed on the uncovered pitches uh, from back in the day, where you did need the second line of defence. I think nowadays the pitches, uh, the ball maybe goes a little bit quicker be because it isn't from the overnight rain that maybe stops in the surface for the spin. Um, and you have to play that a little bit further in front of yourself. So if your timing is fractionally wrong, it does affect that back path coming down. Um, and I think that is why maybe, for a period of time, because of DRS, people haven't been scoring the volume of runs uh, that they maybe did back in the day. 
Yeah, Alistair Cook used that method a bit too. Oh, a bold! Jeepers! That is so close. It's a fast Yorker from Bumrah, and only Stokes, a man with a fast eye, somehow can keep it out. I think it then bounced over the stumps, did it? It looked as though it, bowled, it, it bounced over the stumps. He looks as though he's jabbed it into the crease line, and it's gone, oh, it's gone off the back pad, and it's gone over the top of leg stump. And Jasper Bromer, to be fair, Mark, he's bowled, I would say, a four now in this 92 overs. In all four of them, he must have been thinking, how have I not got a wicket? Sibley, Root twice, and now Stokes. He's thinking, how have I not got a wicket with you know, in-swing in Yorker like that? So, fair play to England for, for keeping it out. Mm. And now go back to Stokes. He's head position when it's in good position. That's a good shot. Beautiful little late cut. You've really got to trust your eye to, to play that when you first come to the crease. And he's got it between gully and second slip. And uh, it's a boundary for Stokes. And England are 269 for three. I always feel, uh, guys, with, with Ben, is when he's when his head's in a, a good position, in a strong position, he's more balanced. And to go elaborate on your point a little bit more, when you're talking about lying. And that second, these, these, these sort of left leg, the second bar of defence, second line of defence I think when he's when his head's in the wrong position that's when that gets off balance and there's many times you've seen Stokes defend and he's ended up on the floor and I think that sometimes has, has got him in trouble and that's what he's changed a little bit more side on a little bit more technique where his head's going you know his eye line's a little bit better Ashwin now to Root who thinks about going back if it almost walks back and then walks forward again to defend that ball we're on talk sport two Join us throughout this series. We have uh, exclusive rights to all of the test matches, one day internationals and T20s. And if uh, the series is to match or, or even get close to matching yesterday, we'll want to be you want to be joining us for every ball. Talk Sport Two. Uh, this time, uh, Root just shimming his feet pushing the ball out to mid on having pushed the previous ball back to the bowler so what we're finding here with these balls being hit very straight is that Ashwin's bowling very full he doesn't want Root on the back foot he doesn't want to work it or want him to work it square on either side of the wicket for the easy single he wants him driving at the ball he might even have bowled a touch slower to, to today looking at that ball as Root plays a, a not quite an orthodox forward defensive more as if he was thinking of working the single but decided not to I think Steve pointed that out yesterday when Ashwin was on the boundary. He wasn't moving particularly well at the end of the day. I wonder if he's just getting into his spell a little bit. Well, he's had injury issues. That is too short, and guess what? <laughs> Root is back and works it into the leg side gap. Fairly square, gets a single, and Ashwin, a little sort of exclamation. Ah! As if to say, that's not what I want. 270 for three now. Root 131. Stokes four. Ollie Pope to come next. So two guys to key players Stokes and Pope who have had no cricket of late and India will know that they're closing in on Stokes there's a, a slip and a silly mid off and then the, all four fielders in the covers are saving able to save the single I'm not saying that they will but they're able to he spins the ball in his fingers uh, really spins it like it's a top loves doing it most spinners they just can't stop trying to spin the ball even when they're standing idle nice full length Stokes goes forward it comes off a thickish uh, outside edge to square leg but they don't run they've thought about it and decided against it the end of that Ashwin over who likes to be known as Ashwin not as R Ashwin or Ravi Ashwin and certainly not as Ravi Chandran Ashwin because uh, it's all about family names and given names in India and Ashwin is uh, as far as he's concerned given name with which he wants to be called Ishant uh, uh, Sharma no wickets yesterday 15 overs none for 27 he hasn't bowled yet this morning Bumrah uh, the main man 2 for 45 from 20 and Ashwin the other wicket and uh, Ashwin's done the lion's share 26 of the overs bowled so far Bumrah and uh, Shabazz Nadim 20 each and then 15 for Ishant and 12 for Washington Sundar 270 for 3 god it is a platform England could double that I mean never mind this talk of six or seven hundred if and it's they're two huge letters for a side starting on a tour but it does put a marker out if you could get to 550 what an effort that would be empty stadium of course on another one of those 
mornings where the blue sky never seems to quite make it through. Early starts in India, 9.30. Four o'clock for us, of course. Here's Bumra to bowl to Joe Root, who leaves alone outside off stump. Bumra is such an interesting... Okay, you were going to say something. No, I was, I, I was just going to touch on what we were, we were talking about before, but with a, with a spinner bowl, and there wasn't much time. If England do get 500, 550, the thing we've got to bear in mind is we're going to have it two of our three seamers haven't bowled for a long long time so if you're getting 550 you're basically saying to win the test match you've either got to bowl make team follow on or you're going to have to bowl twice in a short space of time to win the game with Archer who hasn't bowled especially test match overs for a long long time and Stokes as well oh that's well bowled swings late now we really are seeing Boomer get that in swinger to go now hits root on the thigh pad and it's a withdrawn appeal, the start of an appeal that comes from enthusiasm rather than expectation. He's got a great urgency about him as Bumra. You never see him slouch around. The minute an umpire's turned him down, he just turns around and walks with purpose back to his mark. The one thing that we're noticing, with no crowds in, there are certain players when they're performing, everybody's on the edge of the seat. I'm always on the edge of my seat. When Bumbra's running, I'm thinking, something could happen here. I'm nervous. I'm worried that he's going to take a wicket. Here he comes again, and there is that in-swinging Yorker again. So two in-swingers, one a little fuller than the other, but Root meets that with uh, real calm, actually. He seemed to have all the time in the world to push it to mid on for no run the thing about Bumrah from yesterday I didn't think he bowled as, as well as his figures showed yesterday I thought he was just slightly over the top and because of that he didn't get that seam upright and it didn't swing in he didn't get any nip I thought he did better with the second new ball and here this morning he looks as though he's in perfect he's in the perfect spot Root taps the ground one two three four five six seven stands and cuts beautiful stroke quality shot and cut hard actually he only had a bit of width to work with but well he's in good form great shot fantastic shot a little bit of width there didn't come back from Bumrah trying to sort of get that in in duck shape and on towards off stump it kept going um, on the line and a beautiful late cut there by Joe Root head in a perfect position used the pace that bumra has got on the ball picked the gap lovely between mm. wide right hand of, of gully and backward point Lovely footwork, eh, Army? I mean, Beautiful. it's all there, isn't it? Twinkle toes. Four more to Joe Root. 135 now. England 274 for three. And an unbelievably solid forward defensive <laughs> for this time of the morning. I think what you're talking about, Steve, when you say that little bit of a snap on the ball, it's, there's that saying that goes around, it's like he's hitting the bat hard. hard yeah. So the speeds don't change massively, but he's getting his action right. He's getting that real snap and power through, which just, as a batter, it just jars your bottom hand in that V you make when you're holding the, the, uh, the handle. And what that does with the wicket, if there's anything in the wicket, if you hit the wicket hard, it, it, will, it will do something quickly. Full toss, and a high full toss actually, probably thigh height, which is very unlike Bumrah, and Rude elects to defend it, doesn't want to make any error with it, it comes on to you pretty quick from this guy. 274 for three at the end of that over, 94 overs have been bowled. That's a, um, 40, no, they didn't get, they took the new ball I think in the 82nd, Second, so yeah, yeah. it's 12, 13 overs now with the new ball. Rude 135, Stokes four. You talk about jarring the, the bottom hand, that's the V between the thumb and the forefinger, and then the bone that surrounds the base of the thumb, particularly. Um, which bowler most jarred your bottom hand? For me, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> you had to be in line sometimes to get jarred, didn't you? <laughs> I didn't get the jar, I just got the thud on my thumb when I just got it wrong. Ashwin now to Stokes, who has to reach a little further forward for the ball there, and does so comfortably. He's always been happy, having a long period playing himself in. Um, and he seems to be here too, this time he's back, it's a quicker ball from Ashwin. Fran Lara once said that when I interviewed him somewhere, sometime, I, I give the bowler 40 minutes. If I'm still there after 40 minutes, I'm figuring that the rest of it belongs to me. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, why? Tossed up. Will you drive me? Yes, he will, but he flat bats it in the end. Trying to slap it, really, like a tennis shot. From experience, Mark, it wasn't 40 minutes. It was about four balls. <laughs> I was, just about, I was just about to say, he, he gave us 40 minutes for three days in Antigua. <laughs> oh, good shot. It's full from Ashwin. He says, do you want to come at me? And the answer is emphatic. Ben Stokes pumps Ravi Ashwin down the ground for six. Yeah, I think it's the same for spinners as it is for fast bowlers. If you don't have the energy on the ball, it's a bit of a floaty, sort of a hopey ball from Ashwin. Lobs it right up there. Ben Stokes one foot down and just hits with a beautiful straight back, straight back over his head, no risk in the shot, no venom in the ball and he takes full advantage, wonderful shot. And then forward defensively as if he meant it. I think what we're seeing Mark on, on, this, sort of, on this surface, if it's pitching on the, the decent bit of, of wicket, there's no real demon and no real turn. There's a little foot mark outside for, for, from Ben's off stump. Ah, oh, a little off spinner that beats Stokes' outside edge. He bowled it slower, it dipped a bit, it spun a bit. It's a darn good ball, 95 overs have gone, 280 for three here on TalkSport 2. The ball already looks as if it's taken a pounding. All good stuff. Gareth Batty and Steve Harmison to continue, and so too Andrew McKenna. I think it just shows, Steve, that last ball, Ashwin went for a bit more of an overspin type ball. So the angle of the seam is pointing more towards, his, more towards his slip as opposed to it being square going down the wicket. And it just spends more time on the pitch so it grips a bit more. And it was a bit slower, wasn't it, Bats? It was a little bit slower, definitely. Which normally you would say overspin, you don't always ball slower. But he's obviously used his, his great skill and his height just for the seam to spend a bit more time. But it's the position of the seam that then does spend more time on the surface and hopefully, from a spinning point of view, will allow it to spin more. Morning, everyone. Jasper Brumra is on the way. Right arm over the wicket and Joe Root in behind this one, pushing solidly up to mid-off. He remains 135 not out. England 280 for three. And our analyst is Jared Kimber here on TalkSport 2. Enough off-spin nonsense talk from you, but <laughs> this one's for Harmi. Boomer oh. bowls one percent of his deliveries in Test cricket as Yorkers. Uh, he's bowled Sibley last night, Stokes almost today, and Root handled one. The only bowlers in world cricket who bowl more Yorkers than him are Wagner, uh, Mitchell Stark, and Shannon Gabriel. So he really, really does attack that ball. He's on his way to Joe Root, who is again solidly in behind this. There's a slip and a gully in place. It's a man at uh, shortish cover who does the fielding and there is no run. And you mentioned the Yorker. The, the beauty about Bumrah's Yorker, especially to a right-hander, is the angle that he comes from. He gets, uh, he gets close to the stumps and he, he more or less comes... He, he, he sets it off just outside of stump. But because of his wrist and the angle that he's got, it just always seems to look as though it's going in. And then when he does get that late swing, it goes some sort of middling off and it dips towards, towards sort of leg stump. Bummer in and Root is covering up, just pushing out on the onside, no run. So, Sami, are you saying, because we've seen a couple today probably do more uh, with a ball that's, what, 13, 14 overs old than we did yesterday. You're saying that's more likely to be the bowler than maybe that this ball is doing more than the first one did. I'm fully expecting Jimmy Anderson to get this brand new ball and make it swing, make, make it move laterally. You know, if my, my, much of it was Mark or uh, Manners mentioned yesterday about great swing bowlers well Jimmy Anderson will make this ball move laterally that's what he does that's why he's got 600 wickets Bumrah in Joe Root very solidly defending uh, into the uh, covers no run and if anything Ishent's more of an in-swing bowler and it's more off the wrist so you see it as a batsman you see it early um, and the beauty about the, the reason why Ishant is so good is because he gets that ball just to go in and when he gets his wrist right, any sort of seam movement, because the way the, the, way the seam is cantered, it will nip away. And I think that's why he finds the outside edge a lot. Bumrah, you know, relatively the same. They're not looking to swing the ball. They're looking to move the ball off the seam. Jimmy will have the seam predominantly going towards first slip from a, a right-hander's point of view and let the ball swing, give the ball some airtime. Bumrah in, Joe Root again solidly forward, it goes back to the bowler who tries to catch in his follow through, aims a, a throw at the stumps at the striker's end, but he doesn't actually have it in his hand, so but there's what, no run. What you'll find, what I believe you'll find is, 
when we've watched the Indian fielders, they haven't really been that bothered. It doesn't look as though they shine it too much. If you look at the trousers of the Indian players, there's not many red marks, massive red marks. You watch England. For the first 15 overs, there will be the trousers will be red. Jimmy will be having a go at anybody that makes the ball bounce, and he'll be looking to keep that ball pristine as possible to give him the best chance for it to swing. To finish the over, Joe Root is uh, getting a ball from uh, Bumrah that again is tailing back into him. Joe Root plays it down into the ground uh, and then actually turns around as the ball is bouncing up. He thought it might be going back towards his stumps, so catches it on the blade of the bat to just prevent it going back. He didn't want a Graham Gooch situation from all those years ago where Graham Gooch used his hand to uh, bat it away. And uh, Joe Root did a very decent job actually there for about a second and a half, had it on the blade of the bat. Uh, kit Kicks it away to safety in the end, and that's the end of the over. England 280 for three here on Talksport 2. They resumed 263 for three. Root was 128 out, uh, not out overnight. He's moved on to 135. Stokes uh, has uh, faced 18 deliveries so far today and has taken himself to 10. Gareth Batty and Steve Harmison with me, Andrew McKenna, here on Talksport 2. Yeah, just touching on that point, Steve. I know you big nasty fasties. There'll be somebody on the England team who's designated ball shiner. Yeah. The spinners will be told, do not get your mitts on the shiny side. If you're going to rub your hand in the dirt to get more feel on the ball, I want it on the other side. Don't be holding it in the shiny side. Don't be messing up my ball. Ashwin to start a new over, and that's the one that continues in towards the pads of Ben Stokes. He pushes up to uh, mid on, and there is no run. I've done a couple of features for lunchtimes with Monty Panasar, and we're going to hear him throughout this, this test series. And there's one or two videos out there of Monty describing his catch in 2006 against... Um, uh, Mahindra Singh Dhoni off Sean Udell. This one is shorter from Ashwin and actually grips, turns and bounces a little bit. Stokes has nothing to do with it and it's straight through to uh, Pan, but there was a little bit of grip there for the bowler. And at this point, you'd say, Monty, just go off the field for 15 overs, Monty, just go off. Bring 12th man on. Stokes gets one full, squeezes it out onto the uh, offside. Ashwin will do... Go back to his mark as it's uh, fielded there. There is no run. That's three balls sent down, three dot balls. Not because he's a bad fielder or anything. It's just Monty's got the biggest bucket hands ever. He sweat a lot, and the last thing you want is that combination with a brand new ball. So uh, there are people out there you do not want anywhere near the cricket ball. Just seeing a replay of that one that Ben Stokes left, it took a big old chunk out of the pitch. Uh, Ashwin goes in, Stokes is deep in his crease and pushing this one back to the uh, bowler. But that, that, that previous one, Gareth, that, that took an absolute chunk. Yeah, it was just a fraction wider. It was probably where you would have had maybe a fourth or a fifth stump outside uh, the eye line of the, of the left-handed Stokes. Ashwin is in, Stokes well forward on this occasion, pushing back to the bowler, no run. So it's, it's what Joe Root touched on last night. He said that the, the, the footholds, the rough is just starting to open up and and sort of looking in good condition from an England point of view moving forward. Stokes to complete the over again, forward to Ashwin, and uh, there is no run. It is a uh, maiden for Ashwin. He's now bowled 28 overs that have gone for 76. 97 overs of the English first innings have been completed here on TalkSport 2 in England, are 280 for three, Harmy. And it comes back to what we were saying earlier, Bats, about what score, it's not about what, for me, it's not about what score England get it's about the time England spend on this wicket. I think if England can spend 160 overs on this surface, it stands them in great stead to win the Test match. For the simple fact is, it's about wear and tear. Them foot marks get more and more. See a little bit of dust coming up. Seamers start to get a little bit of dust in and around a good length. All this, the Indian uh, fielders are out there and watching and they're trying to practice their shadow bat and going through their minds when they're seeing the ball sort of spit off Bumrah and turn off Ashwin, and then you've got to go out and do the business. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, psychological warfare for two days, isn't it's it? It's brilliant, there's, isn't it? There's nothing worse walking off that field, and particularly if, if one of your openers goes, goes out early, you, gets out early, you, you're sitting in the chain room, no, no, not again, not again. It was flat when we were out there, lads, what's going on? Bumrah's spell was a short one, Ishan Sharma has replaced him and he's uh, coming in and he's bowling to uh, Joe Root who's just dropping it into the gully, looking for a single but there isn't one there, 280 for three. Now you two have known me a while, I like a niche stat, so would you like a niche stat at this point? Why not, it's only quarter past four in the morning. Go on then. Beat me with it, Macca. So Joe Root was 128 not out overnight, 15 batsmen have been not out overnight in Test Match Cricket, 
How many do you think have gone on to do a, to complete a double hundred? Four. Bats. One. Three. Decent players, all of them. Zahir Abbas went on to get 235. Ishan Sharma is in. He's bowling to Root, who's playing defensively to this one back to the bowler. So Zahir Bass ended up with 235 not out against India in Lahore in 1978. Gordon Greenwich, West Indies against England up at Old Trafford in 1984. And Mahela Jaya Wardener, 243 for Sri Lanka against India at Colombo in 1999. So interestingly, that two of those three have come in subcontinental conditions. So there you go. There's your, there's your early morning niche stat. Come on, Joe, let's make that four on that list. Who would you want to watch uh, out of those three, Harmy? Well, I bowled at Mahela when he got 198, so that wasn't fun. Ishan goes in, and that ball is outside of off stump, and then jags back in a long way off of the seam. Uh, Root was uh, covering that up, he was leaving it, but it did come back in, and uh, Pant ended up taking that one, starting to move down the leg side, but there is no run. Yeah, it was a good leave by Joe. He looked as though he was off balance a touch, but I, I think he was in, in full control, and to, to say who would I want to want to watch there, or be involved in their bats, I'd probably say Gordon Greenwich. For the simple fact, and Mark will tell you, because he, he captained him for a while, was it would be done quickly. <laughs> Mihaela could take a while. Two subcontinent ones, you could be out there for three days. At least Gordon might get there in about a day and a half. Ishan Sharma is on his way for the fourth ball of the over. That's uh, taking Joe Root on the pad. He's trying to work it to leg side. There's an appeal. Nitin Mellon, uh, the umpire, has given it not out. And there's very little movement in terms of the fielders to talk about a DRS because that looked like it was sliding down the leg side. And Virat Kohli has no real interest. India do still have three reviews. England burned one of theirs yesterday, so they're down to two. And they are not reviewing this one, gentlemen. I tell you what, from first look, initially I'd have gone, oh, I might be taking a punt on that. But as soon as it's umpire's call or not out, you just need it to be so much, so much more in your favour than that. It just, there was something, as, he's, as Joe's walking down the wicket, as it struck him, you just feel like he's trying to get his pads outside the line, he's trying to get everything out of the way. Ashanti is in once again. Joe Root is covering up this one, pushing out on the uh, onside. And Darren Goff just made a, a hand gesture to me as if to say, look at where the wicketkeeper is. Rishabh Pant was going well down the leg side, there's your clue. Yeah, and I think there was just a, a touch of late in-swing. When he, he first set this off, you're thinking, yes, from a visual and eye point of view, you're thinking, when, he, when it first came out of Ishant's hand, it's on its way to the stumps, and then right at the last minute, just a little bit of in-swing. The, the, seam, the seam was perfect for the in-swinger, going sort of down towards fine leg, and it just probably did too much. Well, Ishant was definitely interested, as you would be. If I was a bowler on this sort of service, I'd be appealing for everything. He's in and he's meeting the full face of Joe Root's bat. And Joe Root holds the position. He's still holding the position now as the over is completed I'm here on TalkSport I'm looking for one hand, one bounce. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, they should bring in new rules for first innings. First innings, they're out. Second innings, they're not out. Well, I heard, uh, Harmy, that um, with the, uh, the Sri Lanka ones, apparently you, you were playing one hand one bounce then because we had that situation where the big appeal for the ball that had been hit into the ground and, and you were saying that despite playing for however many years you thought that was out, apparently, I, I, I heard on a whisper. Probably, there's a good chance. I think everything's out. I'm a bowler. You know, that's what we do, big, fast bowlers. Anything we go for is out. That, happy days. Goffey's is him. In out as well. <laughs> <laughs> Three to six, they're out. <laughs> then it goes to the bowler. <laughs> 280 for three here on uh, Talksport 2. Gareth Batty and Steve Harmison moving out. Goffey has indeed moved in, and we are at 35 minutes into the day's play. England resuming. Three wickets down are still three wickets down. Root and Stokes have taken it through, and Ashwin will continue. The 99th over of the innings, and Ben Stokes is immediately to the first ball of the uh, new over, aiming something big into the leg side. No real timing on it. It'll dribble out to uh, just backwards square leg, and they will take a single. 281 for three. Yeah, I was talking earlier, uh, Ben Stokes. Sri Lanka tore off, 
played a bit of his on his golf sim later at home. That'll have been his warm up for this trip. Straight into a test match in Chennai. Red hot weather. Second day of a test match. And it, it, it looks to me as though it's, it's, it's going to be positive. He's looking to be positive. He's, he's got a, a way he's going to play in his head. Whether it's the sweep shot, whether it's hit down the ground. We've already seen him hit a fine six. Root gets this one from Ashman. He's just pushing out on the uh, onside. There's no run. And I think the Stokes of late, we, we know he can play all sorts of innings, don't we? We know he can get, he can dig in and make it out for him to dismiss, or he can go out and play a few shots. Ashwin, it's a straight ball. Uh, Joe Root is pushing this back down the pitch. Root had actually taken a couple of steps down the pitch, just in case there was going to be a single, but the bowler grabs it, so Root immediately scampers back to his ground. No run, 281 for three. Ashwin is a little bit of loop on this one, and Root is able to avoid Coley at short mid-wickets. Washington Sundar will do the fielding at mid-on. Root will take a single to go to 136. 282 for three here on Talks 14. Ben Stokes settling in. He's already kept out one brilliant Yorker from Jasper Bromra. On this one, he's got Ashwin coming around the wicket and Stokes is just playing da back down the pitch. There's a silly point in place, a slip, but they're not going to get anything from that delivery. Final ball of the over from Ashwin and Stokes will have nothing to do. That was the arm ball, the one that goes straight on or at least doesn't spin. And he's hoping that uh, Ben Stokes will make an error of judgment, but there isn't one there. Over complete, 282 for three. Interesting in it from Ashwin coming round the wicket to the left-hander, just trying to drift it onto that off stump. Have Ben Stokes in two minds. Is it going to be his big spinning ball or is it going to be the one that goes straight on with the arm? Very clever bowler. Is Ashwin got a terrific test record, missing his good friend, his spin partner, Jadeja, fantastic performer in his own right. He's had to go with Nadim and Washington Sunda in this game, who didn't get didn't get it right. If we're going to be honest, yesterday, so a, a lot's been relied upon with his experienced off spinner, Ashwin. New over for Ishan Sharma. Oh, Joe Root has got the inside portion of the bat on that one. Now it's going to go out to backward square leg where Shubman Gill with the uh, fielding cl uh, short leg pads on is uh, doing the uh, duties. Root will head off for a single, get down to the non-striker's end and immediately inspect the inside edge of the bat. That, did that go between his legs as he's played that? or is it? Uh, anyway, he's got the inside portion of the bat and heads off at about 180 degrees away from where he was actually looking to play it. Mm. I, I'm really... Um, I heard Steve uh, Armisen talking about Jimmy Anderson will get the ball to swing. Um, you only have to look at his record. He tells you with a new ball in his hand, he's, he's pretty good at swinging the ball. He can also reverse it. Because I think both of these bowlers, as we've touched on, are both very wristy bowlers. The look to get the ball to come into the right-hander. As Jimmy... We know from experience to a left-hander, he likes to make it go away from the left-hander, but he likes it to come, well, he likes it to go away from the left-hander, and he also likes it to go away from the right-hander. So it'd be interesting if he does get any movement here in Chennai. Ben Stokes waits, crouched over his bat. Nishant is finally on his way. And he's going to come around the wicket, and Ben Stokes is just leaning forward, using his weight into that one. The front foot never gets particularly close to the pitch of the ball in the classical style. It's hand-eye coordination all the way, but it once again clatters into the middle of the bat, and he's pushing it out on the offside for no run. Well, you don't have to get that big front foot right down the pitch. You only have to look at the great Graham Gooch, the balance at the crease. Don't have to be halfway down the pitch to play a forward defensive. We saw Tom Sibley doing that on a few occasions yesterday. Easy pace pitch with Ben Stokes. He's in a great position. His bat right by his pad and his head over the ball. Most of the time, that is. Ishant on the way once again around the wicket. Stokes punching this bat down the pitch to the uh, bowler. And there uh, is no run. When we started this game, the, the curator had said it was 
going to be a pitch that's sort of English and w with a bit of a green tinge, but it's had a day baked a in green the sun. Tinge. Well, do you know what? It, it was. I'm not, I'm not Who's talking. Who's he kidding? Is it April? Well, I mean, well, look, we're not talking about Headingley or you know Trent Bridge in the 80s, Goffy. But there was a bit of grass on it. What I'm saying is, we had the outfield. Yeah, but now that the feet have gone up and down, it there's re you can actually see the difference in colour today. There's mu much more of an orange tinge of it. We've seen a couple really go through the top. One yesterday and one this morning, and. It's, it's this stage now as it's starting to uh, to get some wear and tear on it that the bowlers will have a bit of stuff to aim at. Ishant is around the wicket and Stokes is pushing up to uh, mid-off for no run. It doesn't look pristine anymore, as well, I guess what I'm saying. You could say that. I think even the pitches to either side of the, of the main wicket, uh, they, are, they were a lot greener yesterday. I think even those pitches uh, have gone... Uh, a little bit more straw colour today. Yeah, they've still got a touch of green, but definitely changed in colour since yesterday. I think what we'll find with England as well is that they'll definitely use a lot more cross-ball, cross-seam deliveries than I think India have bowled so far. If the pitch is dry, you might just get that little bit of uneven bounce or one goes through the top with those, especially with that thicker seam we've got on this ball. Stokes waits, bat raised, Dishant is in, Stokes is pushing down the pitch, it goes just past Joe Root at the non-striker's end and they set off for a single, Jasper Bumrah is the man at mid-on who realises he's got to go and do the uh, fielding and a single is taken, Stokes goes to 12, England 284 for three here on TalkSport 2. Yeah, Mac, it really surprised me, you know, um, with India, because uh, Ishan Sharma, a usually experienced performer, 98 test matches, I think this is his 98th test match, and I've not seen him bowl. Uh, a cross seam delivery yet with uh, like I said that pronounced seam on this new ball harder ball they're supposed to be using he's got a new ball newish ball in his hand and it just seems to be he's just doing the orthodox deliveries looking seam upright slant it into the right handed batsman hoping he's going to miss one Ishant in to complete the seven, his 17th over and that one a uh, little bit of shape away from uh, Joe Root's bat to complete the over 100 have been uh, sent down in the England innings 284 for three here on TalkSport 2 delighted to say that part of the TalkSport 2 commentary team uh, as well for this series is the former Indian player Akash Chopra and uh, he is uh, joining us now Akash, uh, very good morning to you. Uh, can we start by uh, just giving us a bit of a flavour? What was the reaction in the Indian media to uh, to the first day's play? Oh, very good morning to you too and everybody uh, who's listening to us. Uh, uh, not, not a lot of criticism, uh, what we've seen in the media so far. Uh, we do understand that uh, that England is a tough opposition. They've uh, done exceedingly well on their previous tour to Sri Lanka. These are not really spin-ready, so to speak, a dust bowl kind of uh, pitch where uh, you would come and steamroll the opposition uh, and you will be dismissing them in 80-90 uh, overs. Uh, so it is uh, a bit of a rude shock, to be fair. Uh, uh, but then, uh, but then the reaction hasn't been that loud either. Uh, so there is no criticism, uh, but there is a bit of caution that uh, what to expect. If this is the trailer, uh, the picture of this entire, the movie of this entire series is going to be very entertaining. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is going to be Ashwin around the wicket once again. Silly points and slip in place for Ben Stokes. Stokes is turning this up to uh, mid on, and there is no run. Stokes has 12, route 137. There is a long off in place. Ben Stokes has already done, gone down the grounds this morning. And he's got a ball outside of off stump that Stokes is carving into the uh, offside. Rohit Sharma will field at cover and uh, there is no run. Akash, I mean, on, on the spin department, it, there seems to be a huge reliant on Ashwin uh, so far in this test match. They've been pretty disappointed, the two backup spinners so far. Uh, completely agree with you, because uh, there, is, there is a difference of chalk and cheese. When you talk about Ashwin, <laughs> the bag full of wickets, the, uh, the experience that he has, uh, he's not been supported as much by the two young spinners. Well, Ashwin is preparing to come in once again around the wicket Stokes goes into the leg side with an attacking shot it's well played through uh, square mid wicket and it's away for uh, a boundary Stokes goes to 16 
and uh, he's got that from only 34 deliveries England 288 for three Goffey yeah you can see with Ashwin he's going to get frustrated he's looking to drift it onto that off stump of Ben Stotts getting the odd one to turn but Ben's come to the crease he's definitely got that glint in his eye he's looking to be aggressive he's looking to get after the spinners you can see that he's already hit one down the ground for a fine six and there he's just showing us he can also sweep a ball as well and we've seen in this test match you know um, Ashwin's hardly been swept he's tended to ball a fuller length so that's a good sweep shot from Ben Stokes good intent India have put in the uh, short straight mid off and the short cover but there's now going to be a field change and a man is going to go back onto the mid wickets well square leg boundary so there's a, a short fine leg and now a man out on square leg who's 10-15 in from the boundary for uh, Stokes. Ashwin gives him one on the leg side as if to say, go on, hit me straight down his throat. Stokes just turns it around the corner and takes the single. And that's something of a rarity because Ben Stokes now goes to 17 but with a single. Two fours and a six already in a test match innings. He's, uh, he is playing well. Roots, therefore, will settle in, which means the change from the left to the right hander. There's going to have to be uh, some change in the field. Everyone has now reached their places. And Ashwin will bowl over the wicket. Root stretching forward, just pushes it back down the pitch. And there is no run. One ball left in the over. And. Ashwin back to his mark. He's gone for five in the over. Well, that ball's a bit leg side -ish, and Joe Root is going to get down low, turn, help it on its way down to Jasper at Bumra at uh, long leg to complete the over. So 290 for three are England here on TalkSport 2. Goffey and Akash will uh, give you some more thoughts. I'm going to make way for Neil Manthorpe to take over the ball by ball. Akash, I was just going to ask you, you know, um, with the cricketers now, the modern day cricketers with all these test matches, one dayers, franchise tournaments around the world, we've seen two cricketers here that have been rested. Well, a few actually. We've got, we've seen uh, Ben Stokes come to the crease, Ollie Pope's been out injured for a while, come straight into a test match with no warm up games whatsoever. Joffre Archer, we're just going to get used to this, isn't it? It's the modern day game. Uh, it is, uh, and uh, that makes it even more challenging, Guffy, because uh, we've seen how rare the overseas wins are nowadays. And uh, a part of that uh, that story is that there is hardly any time for preparation. Uh, and uh, if you're talking about injuries, if you're just talking about people coming in and playing straight away, it gets even tougher. Ishan Sharma continues now from uh, Patapuramam gate end and uh, that's pushed away defensively by Joe Root up towards mid-off. He remains 138, Ben Stokes 17, England 290 for three. Akash also on the seamers. I mean, uh, I thought Bumrah bowled a couple of decent spells uh, yesterday, but overall, how would you rate their performance yesterday, the Indian seamers? Well, Bumrah has been all right, to be fair. Uh, mm. There is not a lot of help available on the surface yet. Uh, the, there is slowness of the surface that's allowing them to be less penetrative. Uh, yes, we, I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you're talking about... Uh, Here's Ishant once again. England 293 pushed away defensively on the offside. Carry on, Akash. Yeah, when you're talking about that, uh, the lack of uh, cross-seam bowling, and, uh, and that is one part that they should have tried. The other thing that I feel on these slow, low surfaces uh, is at least uh, try one spell of bouncers mm -hmm. and, uh, or rather use bouncers uh, uh, a bit more liberally because uh, currently uh, we have seen the Indian fast bowlers uh, not bowling enough bouncers. And I think as the game progresses and as the tournament or rather the series progresses, you'll find that uh, negotiating a good bouncer on these surfaces is a lot tougher than playing uh, a bouncer at Perth because you can't trust the pace or the bounce of the surface. Joe Roots just signalled uh, to the dressing room for uh, a, a drink of water. He's uh, taking guard on off stump. Here's Ishan. Oh, big in swinger. There's a polite inquiry <laughs> for an LVW there, but that, that has swung too much. Um, it was going to miss uh, the leg stump comfortably, I fancy. Root remains 138, Stokes on 17. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm with you absolutely 100%. I, I just think they've been p- too predictable, uh, the Indian Pacers. Um, you've seen what they've been trying to do right from the start of this test match, ball wicket to wicket. No problem with that whatsoever in these conditions. Uh, but it's just been, there's been nothing else really, except for Bum Rabble in the odd Yorker. Perhaps there was a, with this ball, supposed to be harder, supposed to got that more pronounced seam. I thought they would have tried to use that tactic on these conditions as well, where they would have bowled a few more cross-seam deliveries, the odd bouncer, gone for a spell where Bumrah bowled a short a, a barrage of bouncers at one of the batsmen. Just try something different. They were a bit too predictable. Ishant once more comes charging in towards umpire Nitin Menon and he's up to the crease now and that one goes straight on, no in-swing on that. Root pushes it towards cover and there's no run, 290 for three. Akash, what you were talking about, bouncers on slow, slightly uneven surfaces being as difficult as bouncers on really quick pitches, that's fascinating. I mean, for different reasons, obviously. Absolutely, because uh, as a batsman, you want to trust the pace and the bounce, and that allows you to negotiate the short ball a lot better. You can uh, duck under, you can sway away, uh, and, and, and you know that uh, if you were to ride the bounce, there is, there is some amount of certainty with regards to uh, how high the ball is going to go. But on these surfaces, there is nothing to trust. One ball is going to stay low, one's going to come quickly. Ishant once more up to the crease now, balls and uh, Root pushes it towards backward point. It's intercepted by the gully fielder and uh, there's no run. So as a batsman, you've got to be absolutely crystal clear, isn't it? Because the danger is that you get caught between wanting to attack and defend. Exactly, because uh, uh, yes, you don't want to duck under. When you're playing in India, ducking is not an option that you exercise that often. Uh, you may want to sway away, but uh, the lack of pace, uh, it makes it a little tougher because the ball doesn't really go in a spur. You have more time to think than uh, you would otherwise have, say, in uh, Brisbane or uh, uh, say at uh, Perth. And, and also, just the attacking option. Uh, do you go after it every single time, trusting the bounce or the pace? Uh, if that's uh, sowing the seed of doubt, uh, then as a batsman, you find yourself in a in, in a bit of a disarray. Yeah, as I say, you have to be crystal clear about what your game plan is. Ishant now looks to move this one away from Joe Root on the line of off stump, but uh, he's forward, it hits the middle of a defensive bat, and uh, there's no run. So maiden over from Ishant. He has been exceptionally tidy. Ishant uh, Sharma, he's given absolutely nothing away. He's um, he's asking the questions. So far, England's batsmen have all had the answers to him, but uh, 18 overs at a cost of just 29. It's pretty outstanding <laughs> effort. That, well, that's it? what experience does, you know. We, we, we saw in uh, Sri Lanka, we saw uh, the two England um, paces that have got to play over 100 test matches with Broad and Anderson. When they've got a few overs under the belt, they don't like going for runs. They keep it tight, they get the ball in the right areas. And it's the same with this in Sharma. He's a huge experience. We talked about his averages yesterday. How uh, Since he's got older, they've got better because he puts the ball in the right areas and he asks questions of the batsman. And I expect Anderson to be exactly the same on this pitch. He might bowl a bit fuller with the new ball, Jimmy, when he gets a roll. Uh, and go for it, trying to get that early breakthrough. But once that first spell's done... If India is settled, he'll just bring his length back and look to ball dot balls and create pressure for the spinners. Right, left arm spin from Shabaz Nadim now. Akash, I'm not sure how much longer we've got you for here, but I want to ask you a question that I know you've um, been speaking and writing so much about. Uh, so um, apologies for the repetition, but it is worth getting your, hearing your views once again on India's uh, stated intent not to maximize home advantage um, in terms of conditions so not preparing raging turners and and um, and really really maximizing um, home advantage the idea that they if they want to to dominate world cricket as they as they should then they need to prepare fairer surfaces in order to be able to win away from home reverse sweep immediately from Ben Stokes hits it nicely but straight to Ishant Sharma at what becomes backward square leg um, Akash, so <laughs> there would be a few Indian supporters at the moment saying, couldn't we have just prepared something a bit more spin-friendly than this? Uh, no, I wouldn't go down that route. <laughs> there'd, be, there'd be some supporters who wish that they had. Here's Shabazz once again, pushed away defensively, no run. 
No, I, I, I totally get you. Uh, so there will be supporters who would be actually uh, now starting to cry out loud that why not more spin? But uh, this game is not over yet. <laughs> No, <laughs> it's, it's barely begun. Shabazz once again pushed away by Ben Stokes out towards square leg. And we did see one from Ashwin about 20 minutes ago go right through the top of the pitch. So it may well still turn square by day three or four. So, you know, uh, just to use a different analogy, when test matches start in India on these surfaces, they're like a marathon. Uh, on day four or five, you're talking about a 100 meter sprinter. The game moves so fast because the pitch deteriorates and it uh, uh, it just opens up. And then uh, game is it's a different test match. Uh, day one and day five, you're actually play, playing the same game, but uh, and the same test match, but they are uh, completely different, radically opposite to each other. And uh, therefore, uh, let's hold on to our horses and see how this pitch actually behaves. <laughs> Love it. Words of wisdom. Oh. There's a man who's seen many a test match in India, pushed away <laughs> defensively by Roots, uh, pushed on the offside. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, uh, you know, let's not forget the 2016 series. India, the first test match was played at Rajkot. India, uh, England batted first, made 537 and didn't win the game. Um, I mean, their wickets tumbled there quickly on days four and five. But, uh, you know, again, that game finished in a draw and India went on to win the series 4-0 of course as we all know sweep shot now orthodox one from Joe Root hits it very oh. nicely and there's oh dear me that's not good at all from Ishant Sharma deep backward square leg <laughs> he's uh, he's got to the ball stopped it but didn't control the momentum and uh, as it squirmed away from his fingers it rolled onto the boundary triangles for four four more to the England captain Joe Root moves into the 140s well that's what happens to a fast bowler was in, in is in the middle of his spell concentrate on how he's going to try and get a wicket a uh, lack of concentration and there he goes he's absolutely gutted four runs to england do you know when it comes down to it though india are in a different place than were 10 15 years ago the amount of talent shabazz once more root forward plays defensively no run 295 for three Route 142. The amount of talent they've got now in the pace department, and this is why they've become around the world a team that can win in all conditions. It's not just now going to India and they can be very successful. You look at their bowlers, Ishan Sharma, Jasprit Bumrah, Mohammed Shami, who's injured at the minute, Umesh Yadav, who's injured at the minute, Mohammed Siraj, looking not to play in this test match, uh, Natarajan, uh, the left armer, Tadul Takur, um, they've got Sene. They've got so many bowlers who can all come in to this side and they're in a different ball game to the what they were 10 15 years ago India they've got so many options in all departments Akash I think you're with us uh, for for one more over but, yes barring the spin actually barring the spin it's it's quite uh, I was just listening to Goffey and uh, it, it actually is my, my chest swells with pride when you talk about uh, the Indian fast bowling reserves and the resources uh, while we have that that the one thing that has changed is uh, just the quality of spin. The quality of spin has actually seen a bit of a decline, uh, barring say an Ashwin and a Jadeja. Ishant continues, another over around the wicket to Ben Stokes, drives through mid on, it's a beautiful shot, wonderful outfield, that ball is running away towards the boundary triangles and a great effort, but an unsuccessful one, um, sadly, for who was that to chased it down to the boundary? Uh, uh, Shub, was that Shubman Gill? Yeah. He dived, tried to uh, scoop the ball back, but uh, that's a lovely piece of timing from Ben Stokes, and he gets full value for his oh. runs. That's extraordinary, Akash. What I mean, India's spin reserves are thinner than in recent <laughs> memory. That's what? Is that because of the IPL, Akash? Is that because it's more the, the creating more of a one-day type spinner rather than a longer-form spinner? Here's uh, Ishan. Akash can answer, answer that question after this. As uh, Ben Stokes gets a full wide delivery and drives through the covers for four more. Wonderful piece of timing. A rare bad delivery. You have to say that Ishan hasn't bowled too many half volley length deliveries. Certainly not wide of the off stump. And Stokes has just pushed it through point for four more. Akash. So back-to-back -back boundaries, uh, three not three for three is England right now. And and uh, so what has happened is that uh, we understood as as a country, as a cricketing nation, that if India were to go overseas and do well, uh, you need a fair amount of fast bowling resource and reserve. 
uh, therefore uh, a lot of emphasis was uh, was given to how the pitches were uh, uh, prepared for the domestic circuit so for good 5 7 years we started leaving a lot of grass on the surface and uh, and and everybody is actually a product of uh, the kind of uh, environment and the pitches that you play in and uh, a lot of fast bowlers came through the system and uh, spinners just tend to disappear and uh, that's a real problem because after kuldeep jadeja and ashwin you really don't have spinners here is ishan once more and stokes plays defensively up towards mid on there's no run england 303 for 3 Well, they have got a mystery spinner, uh, but they decided not to play him in this test match, which I think surprised us all here uh, in the commentary box. But uh, Kuldeep didn't probably get a run out uh, with the mystery he brings to the Indian team. Kuldeep should have played, no doubt about that. Uh, but I'm generally talking about, say, if you were to look at the Indian first-class circuit and uh, look at the top ten wicket takers, you'll find seven are actually pacers and only three are the spinners. and that used to be the other way around of uh, say 15 years ago and for the 50 years before that <laughs> here is ishan once more <laughs> pushed away by ben stokes defensively up towards mid on nonetheless like us in i mean the perception that the rest of the world has i think by and large is that indian cricket has never been stronger in terms of its depth without doubt uh and then that's that says a lot about how much uh, uh systemic changes have been made how much of uh, uh money has been pumped into creating the right kind of infrastructure uh, ensuring that the uh, grass root level upwards uh, cricket is taken care of uh, the number of india a tours that have happened in the last 4 or 5 years is incredible uh, i remember playing for india for the first time and that was the first time i played in front of a packed house uh, first day night match was actually an ipl game but that's not the case anymore Is he shunt once more round the wicket to Ben Stokes and uh, pushed away defensively? It was quite full, quite straight. Contents himself with a defensive nudge. England remained 303 for three. Stokes 26, Root 142. Yeah, slow ball there from Ishan Sharma, trying to mix it up. Ben Stokes played a couple of wonderful shots uh, in this over. I think it'll be a short spell from the Indian pacers. I think Ishan, those first two deliveries, will be disappointed. Someone who's been quite hard to get away in this test match so far but Ben Stokes hit a couple of lovely shots either side of the wicket he's followed it up with three dot balls a slow ball amongst them England 303 for three last ball of the over from uh, Shant Sharma and Ben Stokes once more plays defensively just uh, pushes it straight back to the bowler Ishan who does his own fielding 19 overs none for 37 for Ishan Sharma so he's still going for less than two and over it's drinks here I don't know whether Akash is still with us but uh, I know that was the last uh, last couple of uh, minutes you were going to be with us Akash are you still there I I am Neil I I can actually walk uh, yes I can I can uh, like walk you through uh, this drinks break as well uh and and it is incredible uh, rahul dravid for example just continuing on that uh, conversation that thread that we touched upon rahul dravid was uh, had an option uh the player of his stature uh, he had always uh, got this option whether to become say an ipl coach and and then uh, come into the media uh because uh, all these opportunities were just waiting for him to come in and grab uh he chose to work with the under 19 side Uh, he said you know i want to look after the next generation of indian cricketers i want to be a part of that india a setup i want to just see these kids grow and flourish and i'll go to the national cricket academy and i'll become a director there uh, so the amount of hard work that has got gone into making this uh, uh, team what it is right now because what we see currently is just a collection of uh, quality cricketers but uh, what we don't see is uh, the number of cricketers that are playing we always had the numbers uh in terms of the uh, number of kids who play cricket uh, but uh, just to channelize this and uh, make it a nice structure where uh, constant uh, talent is being pushed up the ladder uh, has been an incredible journey so where india is right now uh, is uh, just bearing fruits or are reaping fruits of uh, uh, the hard work that's been put in for the last 8 10 years in uh, indian domestic circuit Like I said, I'm going to hand over to Mark Nicholas now. He's going to take over the ball by ball commentary. Thanks for being with us during this drinks break. But he wants to ask you another question as well, if he may. Akash, can you hang on? Sure. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Good man. Good morning. 
Good morning. How are you? I'm well. I hope you're looking as slick as ever. You're one of the great dressers. Um, <laughs> Akash, not, not as not as slick as you, Mark. Oh, please. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Akash, uh, you mentioned. Uh, I'm sort of a bit taken aback by a comment you just made that other than the the three here in the injured Jadeja. Uh, there's not much other spin in India. Is is that really right? Are, are, are those guys I saw in the IPL, uh, a lot of young spinners, are they not considered four or five day cricketers potentially? Not really actually because uh, when you talk about Washington Sundar who made his debut at Kaaba on uh, the last test match and now he's playing here as well, uh, he played very limited amount of first class cricket. Uh, because he's more uh, of a white ball specialist uh, who started as a batsman, then uh, took up uh, some amount of off spin bowling, uh, and hasn't really picked up uh, like a bucket full of wickets in first class cricket. You talk about Shehbaz Nadeem, of course, he's uh, someone uh, uh, who's taken a lot of first class wickets. He's been playing first class cricket since the age of 14, uh, and he's into his 30s now. But besides these guys, you look at a Rahul Chahar, you look at a Ravi yeah. Bishnoi. Or you look yeah. at a, a, a Murugan Ashwin. Or the guy, or the guy. Who, Patel, uh, all what about the guy who played for Kolkata Knight Riders? Varun Chakravarti. So yeah, you Varun see that all those guys you've played, played four, two first class games? Pardon? Varun Chakravarti has played, I think, two or less than ten first class games. Oh, no, I, I'm not so saying they haven't these played are all a lot. Wide ball specialists. Uh, what I'm saying is, you've mentioned four there that all seem to have the potential. No, no, I agree that they're not ready to necessarily to play Test cricket tomorrow morning, but but they all have tremendous potential. It can't be right to say that India doesn't have any spinners other than these three. Or is you, or is your point that there's no one else ready for Test cricket? Uh, nobody else is actually ready to fill in the spots. If uh, Jadeja is gone, you've gone back to an Aksar Patel, uh, who of course hasn't played. Uh, uh, test cricket thus far, uh, Shahbaz Nadeem has played only one game uh, and Washington Sundar is playing without really playing a lot of first class cricket. Uh, so you know that you're trying to fill in the gaps. Uh, fascinating. Thanks so much. Love listening to you. See you later. We're ready to go again here. Oh, that kept a little low. Very slow though. Slow low is a lot easier than quick low, if that makes any sense. Shahbaz Nadeem, the left arm spinner into the attack. And already the ball looks, well, tired, I think is perhaps the best word for it. But Root is comfortable there. He's seeing it big enough to deal with that low bounce because it was nice and slow. This time he comes forward to a full ball and pushes it out to extra cover. The pair have put on 41 this morning, of which Stokes has 26. And they've done it without, well, sort of with relative ease. I loathe to say with ease. There was a brilliant Yorker from... Um, uh, Jasprit Bumrah that was dug out by Stokes and uh, one that turned past his outside edge from Ashwin beat him uh, Root's been pretty comfortable um, carrying on much as he left off yesterday uh, serene perhaps is, is the word now it's Stokes with those heavily tattooed arms he's got his collar up top button done up sleeves are short so we can see the full tattoo he pats the ground waits lift the bat then he goes on the most delicate of, of little paddle sweeps loops it over where leg slip would have been the chase is on for Ajinkya Rahani who stands at slip and they only get a couple for it but uh, what he's doing is maneuvering the ball around the field and therefore making it very difficult for Virat Kohli to settle into any rhythm here the scoreboard is ticking over without England having to take undue risk at least that's the way things are at this moment we know in test cricket you know, we saw yesterday actually how those two wickets just before lunch change um, the mood of the match and then 306 for three here's uh, Nadim Shabaz, uh, Shabaz Nadim once more and he bowls a good length ball and Stokes just sort of drops it down with those soft hands of his and runs it to uh, slip and there's no run from it Stokes looks pretty comfortable for a guy who hasn't played any cricket at least match cricket I'm sure he's had plenty of time in the nets as he works that off his body and gets a single for it just trotting as the ball rolls out to deep back good square and there's a calm to the match at the moment and, and India's body language though by no means bad doesn't perhaps have the up and atom in your face look that we sometimes see with Indian cricket when the players get on a roll 
Root goes back and tries to punch it. In fact, he does punch it into the space on the offside for another single. So that's the end of that over. Gareth Batty is uh, alongside me. Wasn't that interesting listening to Akash talk about spin in India? I knew, uh, the reason I answered, asked him the question is because uh, you were coming with me here now. And, and, you know, there's a lot of talk in England about the, the lack of available spin outside of the obvious three or four. Yeah, and I think it's happening a little bit world over because majority of younger spinners get pushed into 2020 cricket uh, younger and they, they see the maybe the riches of, of that game when uh, maybe the apprenticeship and the, and the craftsmanship that you learn over a period of first-class matches to then transfer into test cricket is, is maybe diminishing a bit over the world. And, and if it's happening in India, then... <laughs> We can, we can say it's not a crisis point, but it's something that maybe needs a, a correction, almost like the correction uh, that Akash talked about with India and their fast bowling stock. Uh, they created uh, uh, pitches with lots of grass on to, to get more fast bowlers interested. Um, maybe we need to think about that in England, that maybe not to be stamping on people when they get a pitch to turn. Uh, maybe it's OK every now and again to, uh, to play on a pitch to turn to encourage a, a few more spinners uh, around the country. Thank you for that, as uh, we get a full start from R. Ashwin, 3.08 for 3. We're with you, a civil cast actually at the moment, because we're on both TalkSport and TalkSport 2. And uh, we hope that if you are up, you're with us and enjoying listening to the batting here on a bright sunny day in Chennai, once known as Madras, with uh, Ben Stokes and Joe Root, the modern, two of the modern greats of the English game going very nicely route 144 stokes 29 not much joy for the bowlers not much movement out there i heard steve harmerson as uh, root goes forward and blocks that to short extra cover i heard steve harmerson saying he he was certain that jimmy anderson would swing the new ball well that will be interesting to watch because he says it's what he does now root is back and defends into the same area on the offside but off the back foot rather than the front foot with quite an exaggerated look of that left elbow and making sure that he stays alongside the ball really does look organized nothing better than the old footwork going well and now he finds the space on the leg side there are singles around and, and he earns one there it's that's something that has changed in the game the the willingness of captains to allow singles but to block boundaries whereas when i was learning the art of setting a field you very much didn't give away easy singles and you forced the batsmen to take risks to get their boundaries i think that's the advent of more white ball cricket isn't it and, and the more power available to batsmen possibly in the modern way you're worried about the fours and sixes over encouraging it maybe back in the day to try and create a wicket from those big expansive shots 3.09 for three here. We're on TalkSport and TalkSport 2. Exclusive uh, rights to this whole tour that promises so much. And, you know, we've done a lot of talking about it already and we're one day and one and a bit hours into it. Where will we be in a month's time? Who would have triumphed? Who will be the heroes as uh, Stokes goes back and drives out off the back foot onto the offside for another single? England... Uh, ticking nicely here it's, it's always a skill to keep the scoreboard moving with singles 310 for three at the end of that over route 145 stokes 30 um it is a change gareth i i remember doing it myself um if there was a short boundary at one side i my view was i you know don't worry about the single it's so easy to get a four there you've really only got to lean on the ball and half time it and so I would, I would block a short boundary and, and reckon that the batsman would begin to feel a bit miffed not to be making best use of it and might then effectively take a risk to make better use of it. Um, other than that, we used to have sweepers offside, maybe they began to come into the game. It was a Sunday. Oh, that spun a bit. Yeah, Shabazz getting one to bounce and spin a little bit out of the rough, but uh, on the back foot, Ben Stokes equal to it. Um, and this is a good area for him to bowl to. It's, it's, not, it's not bad rough outside the off stump from the bowler's foot marks, but it can force the odd error. So as Stokes goes to sweep, he gets a top edge that lands safely, and it's Ashwin who comes in from deep square leg to field it. 
Yeah, I, I almost feel like the mindset that you had there with the short boundaries, almost the mindset that is used in modern day with the extra power that and, and the different shots that people have, it's almost sort of play on that uh, play on that ego a little bit. I do, you know, bat, do batters have the presence of mind and the want to bat all day now? Hopefully England do today, and they showed they did yesterday uh, from an England point of view, but uh, I think that's the theory in modern day. Nice full ball, nice and straight. Root is forward and pushes it to mid on. Um, television just doing a little display of, of the, where the ball pitches when um, Shabazz Nadim bowls to Ben Stokes. And what I'm more interested in is Root goes forward and plays a lovely forward. That was, I was talking about boycott earlier, that was quite like him actually. Big stride, nice and sideways on, uh, left shoulder leading and then just opening the blade and allowing the spin and the bounce of the ball to be ridden by that soft open blade. Now he drives to mid-off, there's no run, mid-off is alert to it. Nice firm push that, 311 for three at the moment. There's one observation with Nadine, when he's around the wicket he gets nice curve into Joe Root for then the ball to spin out. But when he comes over the wicket, if you just watch his angle, he's a little bit into in. Uh, safe, just squirts up in the air, square on the offsides. It bounces from, uh, maybe took a little piece, who knows. But uh, that was handy for, for England. Uh, it could have sort of popped up anywhere else. Anyway, Root survived, he got a single, 1-4-6, 3-12 for 3. Can I just finish? You, you want to go on with that, then I'll come back to my Stokes point. So the only reason I suggest with the into him when he's over the wicket to Stokes, that bit of rough that he's trying to hit, he's having to ball from wider of the crease, so the ball is travelling outside the eye line into it to then continue on as opposed to going gun barrel straight into that roof or even drift out into the roof to spin back so Ben Stokes is finding it very easy to get his head outside the line to play these sweep shots and to manipulate the ball yeah. around and now so there actually is my point so that's great what Stokes has done is go with both sweeps and uh, yes there's an element of risk in that you can't trust the bounce you could probably trust the spin and there isn't much of it more than you could trust the bounce um, but it keeps him attacking and it keeps India having to reorganize the field because it's annoying for the bowler as Root goes back and works another single out on the offside and it's a very comfortable one there. Root's back foot play against spin has been exemplary in uh, both Sri Lanka down in those two tests in Gaul and this one here in Chennai. It's the game of chess and that's batters need to manipulate the fielder and move the fielders where they want them to make it easier for the single to rotate the strike and the, the captain and the bowler need to be setting a field that's very difficult to get off strike so you can bowl more balls at the batter pin him down at that end so that then when the ball does spit and it goes then you know he's there he's, he's got nowhere to go and you, you get the wicket that was much quicker and flatter from Ashwin well did it 81 kilometers per hour and it was like a seamer really, like a, a bit like Anil Kumble when he got quick. And Stokes just went back and blocked it almost disdainfully really. Now he goes to sweep, picks out the man at point. The old reverse sweep and you pick out the man at point. That's a game with which I'm not familiar. <laughs> Heart in the mouth after Burns yesterday. You feel like we've got the game by the scruff of the neck from an England point of view. He goes again and he's nearly out. It loops up. In fact, Ashwin's asking for LBW, so maybe it didn't hit the glove. But that's exactly how Burns got out yesterday. It loops up, and yesterday Punt was able to catch it. Not so today. And in fact, they're going, are they going DRS? He's humming and ring is Coley and Punt too. And they're going DRS. Yes, they're going to have a look because of the LBW appeal. Interesting, because you just touched on it there, Matt. Pant was shaking his hands, head, so we don't know what the question was. Adam Pant to director, you would suggest play review for LBW, original decision is not out. It's a fair delivery, spin vision, please. Well, teams get three of these now because of the situation with having local umpires at both ends. I think that's an anomaly. This is not far away at all. If he hasn't got anything on this, yeah. it'll be LBW. If he's got glove on it, which the television replay suggests he has, as I yeah. first thought, Clearly actually, glove, um, he's fine. So, screen, you know, if someone had thrown themselves, they might this have plucked this the inches from the ground. Screen, yeah, I, I think I'm right in saying Virat's on the drive. He's on like a, a straight extra cover catching. He would have had a decent view of that just, just hitting the glove bang on that yes had it not have hit the glove it was 
rattling into the stumps but uh, you would have thought somebody around the back there would have seen that it, it wasn't just a, a glancing blow it smacked onto the, the top of the um, right hand of Stokes as he turns his hands around to, to, to play the reverse sweep oh dear oh, it still seems to be a, a risk to me I, we're in the middle of that conversation I just think you're giving to the some, something to the bowler you needn't. When you're looking to bat through the whole day, Stokes plays forward here defensively. Um, I, I just feel, as I said, actually, you, you just can't trust the bounce. And, I, and that's why I, I would put it to bed and, until you need it as an option, which you can don't at the moment. This time he's back defensively. It's the end of that Ashwin over that might have cost him his wicket on another day. Or Stokes his wicket, I should say. Stokes is 31. Rude is 147. It's 313 for three. We're on TalkSport and TalkSport 2. Gareth Batty is alongside me and Jared Kimber is here too and eager to speak. This might sound surprising because of what I'm about to say, but Ben Stokes might have hurt himself then. He just took his hand out of the glove and started shaking it. And you don't actually see him ever show pain. And it wasn't a particularly quick ball. So generally you don't get hurt from being hit from spinners other than your quicker one bats, obviously. Uh, but it did look like it, th he's got a little bit of pain in his hand because it did hit him right flush on, on the hand. So it would be something worth looking at later on. Yeah, something with the modern gloves, you have a lot of mesh at the side to make your hands breathe uh, because obviously here it's very hot. It may have got on the mesh a bit. Shabazz bowls to root. Lovely length, that. Lovely ball in every way, but of course... <laughs> Root just played it like any other ball, four defensive, and it ran out to cover. It was the perfect length, and, and length is all really for spin. Here he comes again. Another beauty. They ask about this one. Oh, that's uh, maybe going down leg side. Did it hold its line? Do they review here? I think Coley will review just because of the bowler's enthusiasm for it. He's got 10 seconds to decide. He's now got eight, seven, six. He reviews. Not a bad review. If it's if it spun, it could well be out. It's, I, I think this is a decent review at first glance. Uh, it's Joe Root pushing forward and the ball's Adam just running to the pad. For LBW, give original decision is not out. It's a fair delivery. Spin vision, please. Nice and slow. Yeah, passing very close. Can we have ultra edge, please? Nice and slow. Yeah, roll it through. Flat line when the ball passes the bat. Ball tracking, please. Pitching in line. Impact in line. Wickets missing. On field umpire on screen, please. Anil, stay with your original decision. You are on screen. Give not out, please. Well, confirmation of not out from uh, the third umpire and it was a really good bit of umpiring full stop um, the ball was bouncing over the stumps which shows you the value of the stride that Joe Root got in in his defensive shot because to us that looked well it looked perfect for line didn't it go <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to go in the defense of the review and the bowl here the DRS showed that it was almost a foot bouncing over the stumps that should have hit Joe Root in the face not in the pad I just can't believe that that technology is correct at this point well I mean, we've been watching him for a day bowl, Nadim. I don't remember him ever getting a ball to bounce that high. He's been skidding most of his balls through. I mean, it did look like that trajectory on that particular ball was going up. Nice sweep from Root, hard and flat. But certainly one for it out to deep square. Uh, look, a uh, uh, big round of applause for Umpire Chowdhury on review, who gave it not out. Uh, I know that Root would have had it overturned, cause, but it, the fact is he got it dead right. Yep, you, you can't argue with the umpire. I'm just suggesting that potentially we are making decisions on what technology is going to say rather than um, what we physically see is, uh, and what we all kind of know well, from the game. Not potentially, Gareth. We are. But it's humans that actually do the tracking on the DRS, isn't it? Oh, no, steady. That is a, they start that the machine. Is a can of worms. That goes um, Stokes and he drops it down to short leg in his back defensive stroke. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, there's been a big appeal against Joe Root to uh, India reviewed, and we were worried because it was very straight. As it turns out, the stride he got in, it hit him on the road of the pad, it was going over the top of the stumps way! That's a real, the first ripping, spitting, unplayable delivery, bowled by Shabazz Nadim, 
rips out of the rough and hits Stokes on the gloves at about stomach chest height type of thing. I take it back. DRS was absolutely bang on. It's bouncing like, I don't know, like a bouncy ball. Oh, it's spinning now out of that rough. Really spinning. That one rips back at Stokes and again it hits him on the glove. So a fine over from Shabir, Shabazz Nadim and really he could have picked up Stokes' wicket and uh, maybe roots in that over. 314 for three. Uh, Talk Sport and Talk Sport 2. A word from Gareth Batty and Andrew McKenna will take over. Yeah, I don't prior to that that over just ball from Nadim I was going to suggest that uh, it's very evident that India are missing the, the skills of J Jadeja because he c in the dead periods he can hold the game beautifully but still take wickets and they've, they've lacked that particularly starting the day with Ashwin and Bumrah you just feel like England got past that period and it's been relatively calm for them at that point right up until that over where Nadim has really hit his straps and found the right sort of pace and trajectory to Stokes to get it into that rough directly into the rough like what Monty Panasar did back in 2012 um, and you just feel like maybe he's hitting his straps with the, the, a very good LBW shout to Joe Root well <laughs> all of a sudden it's happening isn't it it's not going to be a dead period now Ashwin to start the new over Joe Root is playing from deep in his crease pushing out on the offside and will take a single. Joe Root goes to 149. England 315 for three. So a big LBW shout against Ben Stokes that went to a review. That was a terrible review because it clearly hit him on the gloves. And then that one, the LBW shouts. I think we we're all raising eyebrows when we saw how high they decided it was going over the top. Ashwin to uh, Stokes, outside portion of the bat, playing out on the offside. You've been saying it, Gareth Matty. When it starts, it happens quickly. And all of a sudden, it started doing things. Yeah, I, I still think we're, um, we're a bit of time away from it, it, it becoming extremely difficult. Yeah. Stokes has decided to go down the pitch. And that is a uh, potential court and bold for uh, Ashwin there. He's ringing his right hand. He's flung his right hand out to try and grab it. It's uh, been uh, knocked down. A single will be taken. Stokes goes to 32. And England put another to the total. Jared Kimber. Yeah, it was definitely a drop. He, he nailed that straight back at him. There was, there's a legendary story that George Headley, the Jamaican, used to do that to spinners early on, try and injure their fingers by smashing the ball back at them a lot. Uh, the, the interesting thing about Nadim is the over before that happened, he got one to keep very low as well. Ashwin is in. Joe Root propping forward, 149 nut out, drops it down at his feet, no run. So if you haven't seen much of this game, I would say that um, Nadim has bowled very similar to Shaky Al Hassan, sort of skidding them through, but they've all gone through at a very consistent height. Suddenly, everything's keeping low or taking off. Joe Root comes forward, pushing into the offside for Ashwin. Takes a couple of paces down the pitch in case there's the single to get him to 150, but there's not. And we did see, what well, must, must have been about four or five overs ago, we, we, I think we commented on it briefly, that a puff of dust came up and an actual chunk of the pitch came off at that time. So that is clearly is what is happening. You can also see now the pitch finally looks red, Madras red. Ashwin over the wicket, root deep in his crease, turning to square leg. Can't beat the fielder on that occasion, and he will remain 149 nut out. It's Talk Sport and Talk Sport 2 at the moment. We're on both channels. England are batting, won the toss yesterday. They're 316 for three. They resumed this morning, 263 for three. So no wickets down. Root has moved on to 149. Ben Stokes is 32 not out from only 61 balls faced. And these are the thoughts of Gareth Batty. The positive signs are that uh, things are starting to happen. Not a lot still. They're still just still very sporadic. But uh, certainly from the rough, there's the odd ball going. The best thing from an England point of view, from the main part of the pitch, there's not a lot happening still. So England can still go deep and get a massive score here if they keep playing well. Stokes is going to face Nadim. Nadim actually was coming in, got into the delivery stride and then bailed out of it. So he's going to go back and have another go. To Stokes, he's got a long on in place and a deep backward square leg on the boundary. Nadim is bowling left arm over. Stokes is trying to swing this into the leg side. He's taken a big stride. It hits him on the pad. Uh, that is an enthusiastic appeal from Pant, but not a particularly sensible one. Yeah, it's never going to be out, but uh, this is more we expected from India, that they're just going to use that little bit of rough, create some doubt, make the batters be a bit more rash in decision-making. 
Nadim is in. That's wider of uh, Stokes. Well, I thought that was going to be a brilliant catch at mid-wicket. The fielder has taken off to his left-hand side. Full dive. And is it Pajara who's, uh, who's got a hand yeah. on that? And Stokes, uh, from outside of off stump, he's trying to whack it into the leg side. And well, in the end, it's a brilliant attempt. Stokes has absolutely drilled that. And that's like a, a goalkeeper in the Premier League this afternoon. If, if you're going to be listening to the football commentary on TalkSport and TalkSport 2, that's a goalkeeper getting up to deny it going in the top corner. Stokes on this occasion drops it into the offside and takes a single. And uh, it's 319 for three. Stokes goes to 35. Just a reminder, he's now been dropped in two consecutive overs as well. I think there's a lot of players in India that would have taken that catch. Pajara's maybe not the most naturally athletic. He doesn't have much uh, cartilage left in his knees. Although, to be fair, in that case, he, he, he was, he was uh, diving quite well. But he's not the most brilliant athlete in the field. Brings Joe Root onto strike. 149 not out. Nadim is around the wicket. And Joe Root, easily as you like, just pushes into the offside into cover and takes a single to take him to 150 not out made from 260 deliveries and Joe Root's incredible run of form continues has he ever played better than this he's got 150 out of England's 320 for three oh captain what a magnificent innings and I don't think he's done yet let's hope he's not let's keep him going as he is he's playing so so well this occasion Stokes is pushing out into the uh, offside and uh, there is no run there's just a calmness to the way that Joe Root is he, even from ball one there's just been a calmness about the way he's gone about his business a confidence and assurance Stokes swings hard into the leg side on this one he's got a good old chunk of that piece of cricket ball and it's going to land 10 15 rows back in the stand and Ben Stokes is there and he is in great form 41 not out with the six England 326 for three here on TalkSport and TalkSport 2 God what a shot it would be a spinner he's had him on toast for like five or six balls there one's gone low one's bounced he's gloved him and it's copped his shoulder and not gone to the short leg really had the, the upper hand for that period of play Ben Stokes not having any of it a massive lap slog from the rough ball turning and bouncing well it went about 15 rows back into the yellow seats of the Chennai Stadium what a shot well the batsmen are having a drink and taking a breather Darren Goff and Steve Harmison are moving into the uh, the summarizers Ooh. chairs and Goffy is leaning back in his chair with a big smile on his face you're enjoying watching this aren't you I am and I'm really impressed um, the way Ben Stokes has gone about it yeah listen he's had a couple of chances there's no doubt about that but he's come to the, the crease with an intent to score and that's obviously been a, a problem for England over the years when they tend to go away it's about survival but you've got to have a bit of both and I think what Root's done and he's been allowed to do is just set himself again because he's got Ben Stokes at the other end who's looking to attack the spinners so again they're working as a partnership they're working together and England now are sitting comfortably on 326 for three army what do you yeah, think very much so I think it's been it's been a fascinating morning session the way Stokes has gone about his business the way Root has more or less took over the the, the Dom Sibley role and and let let Ben Stokes be Ben Stokes Ashwin to start a new over Root will clip this to uh, a wide mid on and uh, take a single 151 he goes to England 327 for 3 there you go come on come on you're on Stokes you come and play Ashwin you and her attacking you and a sweep <laughs> sweep six off you go mate I was just about to say to you Darren there comes a point as a fast bowler in a series when when you know you go in and think you're going to play like against a gun player in Joe Root Ashwin in Stokes just playing from the crease pushing out on the offside now run and we've had it during our career when you've gone at like Lara or Pontin or you know some of the big Tendulkar Dravid Callis yeah. I can keep going all of a sudden <laughs> you get to the first test in the get 150 Ashwin in Stokes is clipping this to uh, mid off it was aerial but lands about three four meters in front of the field there in the end they get about 150 200 and you think i've got a bowl at these they've got a bowl at this guy for another month 
Yeah, that's when five test match series don't seem quite so appealing, it, doesn't it? It's a Stokes is forward, <laughs> pushing out on the offside, no run. Mate, when I play, we used to have six ashes, six t- tests against Australia. They used to get 700 in every one of them. <laughs> Not you again. <laughs> yeah. Ashwin around the wicket. Stokes is waiting as this one is on the leg side. It's out to mid-wicket. They take a single, and I'm not sure there was a single there. The throw into Pant was not the best. And I'm, it's one of those, I'm quite waiting to see a replay there, because I'm not sure Joe Root was in the frame. He would well, have been out. Looking at Ben Stokes's face, he's just sort of pulled a funny face to Joe Root, as to say, I don't even think you're in the picture there, mate. Well, yeah, I've just sold you down the river. Has he forgot he's been batting all day yesterday? <laughs> he's 150, Ben. What a shocking throw, though. No wonder Ashwin's you're not happy. Ashwin is now bowling to uh, Root, and Root is forward, just uh, blocking it into the uh, the offside. Um, yeah, well, uh, I mean, how do you describe that? He's, he's pushed it out, set off for a single that isn't remotely close to being there. Washington Sundar has picked up the ball, thrown it to Pant, and taken him a yard away from the stumps. He's not able to gather it cleanly, and Joe Root still was a yard short of his ground as he was fumbling around with it. Well, Ben Stokes is 42 not out as a result of that single. End of the over, 3.28 for three, but Joe Root... Well, it, at times in Sri Lanka, the only way he was going to get out was going to be a run out, and... <laughs> It appeared he might have been going down that route again there. Well, he wasn't, and he's still there. So, thankfully, um, he's 151 not out. Yeah, breathe easy, folks. Stokes is getting this one from uh, Nadim, and he's just playing it down to his feet, and there is no run. Men out on the, uh, the boundary for Stokes. If he wants to go big on the left arm spinner, he's bowling left arm over. Yes. Stokes is going to go the reverse, though, into the offside. And that is beautifully timed. Three bounces through backward point for four. What a shot that is. And Ben Stokes has 46 already from 72 balls faced. He's just having a net, Ben, isn't he? Um, had a month off at home, playing his Call of Duty on the Xbox. And now he's playing a test match in Chennai, but he's just having a bit of fun gone out there no pressure whatsoever he loves playing in India got a good record with the IPL and now he's just having a net out the rough it's great to watch out the rough no less he's going on the reverse again 46 not out guess what Ben Stokes does it again pings it out the middle back to back reverse sweeps to take him to 50 from 73 deliveries England 336 for three and Ben Stokes has Test Match 50, number 23. He's turned 10 of those into hundreds. England will be hoping that number 11 is today. But Steve Harmison, your old mate, is making it look ridiculously easy. Yeah, fantastic execution of the, the reverse sweep. That one was a lot more controlled. He hit the middle of the bat and he kept it down. Stokes stays deep in the crease on this occasion, dropping it down at his toes. What I'm liking about Ben Stokes is when he's in defence, he's dropping his hands and he's playing it soft. He's trying to play, you know, bounce the ball down in front of him and, you know, try and play in a little bit of French cricket. But when he's attacking, he's attacking hard. Nadim over the wicket. This one's turning into Stokes. Stokes drops it off the bat down to his toes and kicks it away to the wicket. And why that's, no why that's so good he's attacking hard is it gives him a better chance to get in a good position you know, keeps his balance, his head, and he, he's got intent. And when he's going with intent, he's got more chance of executing it properly. Nadim is outside of off stumps. Stokes from the crease to end the over. 336 for three. TalkSport and TalkSport 2 bringing you all the action as England carry on. I mentioned uh, the football earlier on uh, uh, with the uh, Pajara fielding attempt. Um, obviously, it is Saturday morning. Um, it, it's pretty early Saturday morning, so there's going to be plenty of football throughout the day, of course. TalkSport and TalkSport 2 uh, bringing you plenty of games across game day, starting with Aston Villa, Arsenal at 12.30, going all the way through to Manchester United, Everton at 8 o'clock. Um, if you're not listening to us via the app at the moment and you're on DAV+, Plus, maybe you'll need the app later on to choose which game you want to uh, listen to. So if you download the app, you can uh, swipe and pick which game you actually want to listen to. So there's an awful lot of sport on, on TalkSport and TalkSport 2 throughout the course of this weekend. At the moment, Darren Goff, the cricket's going quite nicely. It is. The game's going forward and Ben Stokes has come in. Um, and again, as a bowler, 
Ashwin to Root. Root turns into the onside no run. You think in second day, it's been a difficult first day. England are in a good position for one of the players to come out and try and take the game away for you pretty quickly. It's an horrible feeling. It's an horrible feeling. Slightly uh, quicker from uh, Ashwin, that one. Root just pushing into the uh, offside will take a single. And players that do that, Quinton de Kock, South Africa, when he comes in, uh, back in our day, you've got Adam Gilchrist, you've just got the heartbeat of their side out, and then he used to walk in at seven and decide, but he wants to hit a 60 ball 100. Um, never easy to bowl at. <laughs> Makes life tricky. Just over 20 minutes left of the session. As Ashwin around the wicket to Stokes. Stokes on the back foot pushing down the uh, pitch, no run. The interesting thing you've got here though, Maka, as well, if you look at the two sides, you know, the two left-handers that are in, are in this match, they're both very attacking players. Ashwin to Stokes. Stokes doesn't attack on this uh, occasion, defends back down the pitch. And the point with that is, when they're going to come out to bat, they're going to come out with intent, and I think they're going to need that, having to play out of the rough. We've seen so far this surface. In the rough, it's quite difficult for the left-hander, but off the... Ashwin in. Stokes drives hard up to uh, mid-off. Uh, there is no run on that occasion as he finds the fielder. Like we've just seen there, the ball's landed on the surface, not um, you know, on, the, on the nice bit of the surface, not in the rough part of the surface. There's not really much happening, really. If there's any spin, it's really slow. Ashwin in to complete the over, and Ben Stokes will uh, play it back down the pitch, and that is at the end of the over. England 337 for three. By the way, uh, Coffee mentioned Quinton de Kock a minute ago. Um, he's been dismissed in Royal Pindi. South Africa 126 for five now, replying to uh, uh, Pakistan's 272 all out. Don't know if you saw much of the first day of uh, that game, but that that pitch would be an absolute heartbreaker because. Um, after lunch on day one, it was basically shin high in terms of uh, bounce. I, I don't think you boys would have particularly Ooh, enjoyed that. To be, to be uh, I mean, it's perfect for me, skiddy bowler, that type of pitch. You, you don't mind it. Um, if you're a tall uh, bowler, probably like Army, it's not ideal. But for me, if you get it in the right areas, you skid through it. It's keeping low. You're in the game, aren't you? What? Yeah. One one thing about one thing about it. One twenty-two for five. You look at this one. It's three thirty-three for three. I wouldn't be exactly having a great deal of fun on this one. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of know where I'd rather be. Uh, yeah. You're, always, uh, I've just had a word in me. You're five foot. You're five foot nine and going getting smaller. <laughs> five foot ten. Come on. Five foot ten. Yeah. You got your pumps on. Right. Washington Sundars coming into the attack. Neil Manthorpe's coming into the uh, commentary attack. Well, hopefully uh, for Washington Sundar, he he will be uh, part of the attack because uh, yesterday he was anything but a threat. Here he is in his uh, off spin, and that first delivery is turned away out in the onside by Joe Root straight to mid wicket, and uh, there's no run there. England 337 for three. A couple of uh, very difficult chances. Ben Stokes on 32, otherwise nothing. Here's Washington Sundar again. Root forward playing defensively. Square of the wicket on the offside. I reckon they are really regretting not playing cool deep. And I'm not just saying that about the score. Uh, quite orthodox, the spinners they've got, Nadim and Sundar. They've already got Ashwin. We know he's got a bit of mystery about himself. Here is uh, Sundar once again. Sweep shot from Joe Root straight to Shabazz at square leg. No run. But what I was saying is that with England, the way they played orthodox spin in Sri Lanka, I thought they played it quite well. And I thought that extra little bit of mystery uh, for Indi in India with Kuldeep might have just been the trick but left him out of this first test Sundar in once again bounce here oh there, there's a little bit of overspin perhaps and uh, that one bounced Keep quite it coming. seriously and Joe Root has a, a rueful smile on his face as it hits him on the glove be interesting to see where this did bounce whether it bounced yeah it was on the oh. on the surface <clears throat> sorry it was on the, the surface of the wicket rather than you know any sort of footmarks down the wicket comes Root here, thinking I better get to the pitch of it. And that kind of bounce, that came out of, gee, that came out of nowhere. Well, it's a couple of times though already um, uh, today we've seen that uh, the left armer bowling over the wicket into the rough. You got Jack Leach now. We were looking at the, the pictures at the, from the feed, having a huge smile on his face because it's now starting the odd one starting to misbehave. So no wonder they have got a smile on the face. The players watching in the dressing room and Joe Root and Ben Stokes seem to have been having lots of fun out there this morning don't they? Good relationship those two, good friends away from cricket 
He's um, Ben Stokes is Joe Root's general, isn't he? He's uh, the man he wants at his side. The enforcer. The enforcer with bat and ball. 338 for three. Joe Root, 153. Ben Stokes, 50. Nudges this one to Stokes out towards mid on, widest mid on. And uh, it's gone straight to the fielder once more. Fielded by Pujara. No run. 115 overs gone. For all that excitement that the pitch is beginning to provide now, every now and then, not very often, I think England's batsmen will still be saying, and Root will still be saying, not enough. Not enough. Yeah, absolutely, Manners. And it is not enough. The two of them, you know, two good friends. And you mentioned how good of friends they were. I spoke to Neil Fairbrother, who looks after Root and Stokes um, day before the game and talked about Ben presenting Joe with his cap, his 100th cap. And Joe spoke fondly about it last night in the media. And Ben Stokes was nervous, very nervous about what he was going to say and how he was going to say it because he didn't want to make a mess of it. And you know, when you're talking about you know, friendship and what they've gone through, they have gone through a hell of a lot. You know, Ben spoke about Ben spoke fondly about Joe being there for him when things weren't going so well and we what happened with Bristol and stuff like that. And then, obviously, you know, Ben and Ben and Joe have, have gone through their whole career, seventy odd Test matches. You know, that Ben's got. So, you know, you talk about good friendships and when you get into situations like this having your mate 22 yards away is arguably as good as, as anything else in the world because you want to get a score for him and he wants to do it for you Jasper Boomer is back into the attack now for a final burst before the lunch break here is Boomer first delivery is uh, turned nicely off his pads by Joe Root down towards fine leg and uh, they go through for an easy single I was thinking ice cream there and you talk about Ben and Joe <laughs> <laughs> business partnership in the future I'm sure <laughs> but the uh, Bumrah really uh, the all Indian attack has looked the most dangerous bowler hasn't he so far in this test match so we say it's quite slow the pitch but he's the one who looks like taking wickets more than any of the other bowlers which is promising for England because we've got Archer and Anderson and Stokes in the bowling lineup. yeah and the, the thing is hindsight's a wonderful thing but the one person that you could have argued that Kuldeep Yadav could have played but Mohamed Shiraj could have played as well you know he takes the ball away from the right handed batsman he's more of a swing bowler but fantastically well at the Gabba I think it was and he swings the ball naturally away you've got two seamers who both like the ball to go in rather than go away slip in a gully for Bumra to Ben Stokes and uh, he plays defensively back comes down a nice straight line towards mid on Jared uh, just talking about the seamers, other than the fact that Joe Root's scoring rate against the seamers, I think, has been around two runs and over, and he's scoring it way closer to four runs and over off the spinners. Uh, Bumrah is quite an interesting bowler. This is his first test in India, but so far he's taking 49.5% of his wickets with bolds and LBWs, which is a, a normal thing for an Asian spinner, except for the fact that, uh, sorry, an Asian seamer, except for the fact that he hasn't bowled <laughs> at, at home before. Um, just to compare that to other bowlers, Cummins only takes 21% of his wickets with bold or LBW. Boomerang looks for the Yorker, dug out nicely by Ben Stokes to mid on, no run. Uh, Broad's at 43%. Um, and so it's not it's not exactly a normal a normal thing. I looked up a couple of uh, older bowlers as well. Uh, Darren Goff, forty one percent bold LBW. Steve yeah. Armisen, twenty eight percent. Yeah, well, he's one of Snow White's merry men. He's gonna he's always gonna hit stump more chance hitting the stumps than me. I'm six foot five. He's five foot one. Well, that's what, that's what I said. I, I agree with you. And Bumrah is very similar. He he bowls at the stumps. He bowls at full length, and he does people with that fuller Yorker. Here's Bumra once again, pushed away defensively by Stokes from the crease once again. So basically, Bumra and Goffey were very similar with Bold and LBW. Yeah, I mean, Goffey's probably, what, four or five yards quicker, but other than that, very similar. What, then army? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was actually surprised Broad's you, record was so high. Yeah, you actually. were with his 10 grand for the fastest ball <laughs> in the summer. <laughs> uh, 339 for three, a wicketless session so far for India well and for England here is uh, Bumrah once more up to the crease that's leg side and uh, tucked away off the thigh pad behind square on the leg side by Ben Stokes who moves on to 51 Joe Root 154 England 340 for three into the 120th over there's always a saying in test match cricket if you can keep a side in the field for four sessions then um, you begin to break the attack no matter how many bowlers they've got 
and England uh, are on the verge of doing that and <laughs> it'll be five sessions as well perhaps yeah. more just going to keep going man it's going to keep going here Joe Root will be telling his team all the time here is Bummer once again oh, oh. beautiful in swinging Yorker very well dug out by Joe Root he has to try and get his toes out of the way that was a real toe crusher from Bummer a beautiful delivery and uh, well Root's been at the crease for 271 deliveries and he's got 154 runs and that was a magnificent delivery and Root now <laughs> walks down to have a chat to mm. Penn Stokes he's just making that big reverse inducker He's, action. He does bowl it really, really well, doesn't he? And it's so much quicker than his, his stock delivery. And I think that's why he's got a good rate of dismissals, LBW and ball. Because when he does go for it, he makes you as it's five miles an hour quicker. And he has that great wrist position where he slants it into the right hander. But that's what you had. You had a you had the, the perfect in-swing in Yorker. Just talk us through what sort of changes you'd have to do to get to that in-swing in mm. Yorker because you, you could swing it away with a new ball, but you know when the ball was reversing, the difference you had to move your, your body and the body shape was... Um, what, well, talk us through how you'd build that in-swing in Yorker. Well, down again, when I was fit and really at my peak, it used to be getting to the close of the stumps and really ball yeah, round down. Similar to the Malinga action, but not quite as obviously low. This is a natural low action. Washington Sunday continues with his off spin. Stokes plays defensively, no run. 340 for three. But the most important thing uh, when you bowl in a Yorker is to get close to the stumps if you possibly can and set it out just outside the off stump line. But it's got to be the effort ball. It's the effort. Washington Sunday, big uh, swerve on this one in towards the left handed Stokes. Plays defensively, no run. Because what does them is the pace, the difference in pace from your normal stock delivery to a Yorker it's similar to a bouncer people always when they try and bowl a bouncer will give it un effort Sunday in once again more drift into Stokes playing defensively 3.40 for 3 but for some reason when they bowl a Yorker they just bowl it's, it's a normal stock delivery it has to be the same effort as your fastest ball can be Ben Stokes 51 not out here's Washington Sundar goes for the uh, slog sweep once again and connects with it beautifully through mid wicket for four more well it's playing the shot on length of course and uh, he hits it so well so cleanly more often than not a couple of half chances on 32 Ben Stokes had drilled one back to Ashwin couldn't hold on to a very very sharp one handed chance and then a similarly difficult one at mid on to Chiteshwa Pajara but otherwise Stokes has been in sublime form and that boundary takes him up to 55 England 344 for three here's uh, Washington Sundar again Stokes plays defensively this time and there's no run I just think the intent the intent that Ben's got especially because he's he's got the footholds around him the, when he's looking to score he's looking to go hard and looking to make sure that he makes good contact with it and the intent's there and he's got better chance of making contact Sunday in Stokes goes for the slog sweep once more and uh, this time he's picked up another boundary he hasn't got all of that that's a little bit of a bottom edge on that but uh, <laughs> he's got more than enough of it but he looks at his back quizzically now saying what's wrong with you where's the middle uh, do you know when it comes down to uh, Ben Stokes? I think they, they showed some of his stats earlier. Is when he sweeps, it tends to be a slog sweep. He doesn't really find sweep. He's not really. It, it goes behind square, on the leg side. It tends to go that mid wicket area. So I'm surprised they've not had a fielder there for him because that is a big shot of Ben Stokes. I was looking this up earlier because they did flash it up on on the screen, didn't they? So uh, slog sweeps in Test cricket usually average 21. Now, that might be a lot of tail enders playing them as well, but they're not a high percentage shot. But for uh, Ben Stokes, they seem to be. He gets away with them a lot more than anyone else does, um, partly because after he's hit a couple, they take the bowler off uh, and he doesn't have to deal with them anymore. Well, and, and he plays it particularly well. Yeah, <laughs> sure, <laughs> if you want to say that. It comes down, for, again, it comes down for me, the intent. When, he gets, when he's got that intent, it means his head's going towards the ball, his hands are out in front of him, and he makes good connection with the ball and he's got a better chance if it doesn't quite get there like it did in that last one if he's still if he's still got the intent to hit it he's got more chance of getting it into a gap where if he's a bit apprehensive then all of a sudden he brings the close catches into play Bumra continues now and Root steers it away defensively into the gully Jared, when you say 
in test cricket, the slog sweep averages 21. Just break that down a bit. So let's say 100 uh, slog sweeps have been uh, played, then that, that's the average that you would get if slog sweep was a batsman. Um, so in other words, point. yeah. So you're saying so it's actually not very productive historically. Stretches. No, it's it's not a particularly good shot in Test cricket because I suppose you get the uneven bounce as the pit as uh, as the pitch goes on. The reverse sweep averages 47 in comparison, so it's a lot more. Wow, here is Jasper Boomer once again, and uh, that's pushed out towards mid off, and a quick single is taken by Joe Root. He's very clearly now s saying to to Ben Stokes, just with his actions, if not with his words. You, <laughs> you can have as much of the strike as you like. I did also find two reverse pulls in the system, so I'm assuming that was when Glenn Maxwell was playing Test cricket. What is uh, a reverse pull? <laughs> Wait, you know what would be interesting? Who actually? were bowling? Mickey Mouse. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What would be interesting is how productive the slog sweep is in the first innings as opposed to the second innings when there is more uneven bounce. I don't even know. Is that possible to break that down? Here's Stokes once again leaves that one alone outside the off stump from uh, Jasprit Bumrah. Stokes now with uh, the bit between his teeth. I mean, we've talked a lot about the statement of intent with which he is playing. And he, I mean, he just looks... Well, traditionally, conventionally, you'd be saying, you'd be thinking to yourself now, just play for lunch, Ben, play for lunch. But that's not how it works these days. Yeah, I think he, he does have that in his mind. He does play for lunch. But if the ball's in an area, the intent's there, he's going to score. Here's Bummer once again and uh, looks once more for oh. the Yorker. And it's a half volley on leg stump and it's flicked away nonchalantly through mid wicket for four more. And when I say Ben Stokes has got the bit between his teeth, that is his fifth boundary in the last three overs he is absolutely flying along now 63 not out England bring up their 350 353 for three well, that's what Armour was talking about his balance his movement at the crease his head is still and he just uses the pace of Bumrah just plays it he's got exactly where he wants to hit it his head follows the ball and he's straight through mid wicket beautifully timed shot for another four He's in fantastic form here, Ben Stokes. To say he's not played for about three months. There's a couple of men at mid-wicket, one square, one straighter, and uh, Bummer is in again round the wicket, and uh, Ben Stokes happy to play that one defensively, and there's uh, no run. Goodness me, he's looking in terrific form. He is, and he's, like I said before, you, know, you talk about the intent, he, he, his body shape's perfect, and he's, just them last two balls just typify about it. You know, the last ball there, a little bit back of a length, just gets himself in a body position where he can just drop his drop the ball in front of his eye line and say thank you very much well bold boom and last ball of the over and stokes happy to push that one defensively out towards cover and uh, there's no run we've only got a couple of minutes time for one more over before the lunch break you would think and uh, stokes is 63 not out joe roots 155 england a 353 for three oh he's at the it's not the end of the over because that's been called a no ball. Was that the alarm? Is that yeah, the alarm? Yeah, that's the no ball, ball alarm. Yeah. Hang on a minute, you've not finished, mate. Come back, you're going to ball another one. This <laughs> vehicle's reversing. <laughs> it's a bit like it's a bit like your alarm and your eyes at 1:45 yesterday morning. <laughs> <laughs> and this morning, mate. <laughs> oh dear me. Your driver tried to get you about that 300 yards you didn't want to walk for your car this morning. This vehicle is reversing. 1:45 a.m. alarm call. That, that's me. brutal. What is that, that about? That is brutal. 145. We ain't all got the hotel name. life, man. It's like you. You just walk 50 yards across the road. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm abiding with that uh, Shea Batty. Are you? I am indeed. In the guest suite. 354 for three. Here's the the last ball of the over to be rebold. Jasper Bumra had nothing behind. He looks for the Yorker. It's a low full toss. And Stokes, there's evidence perhaps that he is playing for lunch here. It's, that was a, a low full toss. He might well have driven that through mid on uh, had it been the first over after lunch. But um, it's happy to push it defensively. The mid on, 3.54 for three. Jared. So, last three years of the slog sweep, it's averaging 16 and a half runs per shot. So, it's even struggled more than it has uh, traditionally. And in the fourth innings, it goes down to 13 runs per shot. So 
and most of those would be the ones that uh, Stokes played off uh, Nathan Lyon at Heady Lee. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's gone all right in this game because Root hit it six off it yesterday and Stokes, is every time he's played it this morning, he's got a boundary. So they've gone, they've gone all right from that. We have men and men that haven't really had the field where Virat Kohli, could you criticise his captaincy because he's left that gap open? But also, is he trying to buy a wicket and say to Stokes, well, you're doing it out of the rough. Keep going. Last over before lunch is going to be bowled by Washington Sundar. Jared, what I am interested in, though, I mean, it's fascinating to talk about the value of a particular shot and what it's been worth. Sundar in, driven by a route up towards mid-off. But then its value will be devalued by people who play it badly and tail enders who are just having a slog and it goes down as a slog sweep and you know and so, somebody like a Ben Stokes would be saying hang on a minute it's it's worth more than 21 percent when I play it because as Harmy says this last next delivery is pushed away defensively do you know what I mean well I, I said for him it's certainly going to be worth more than that I mean it's one of his best shots so uh, essentially what you're trying to do is play high percentage shots if that's a high percentage shot for you you keep going with it here is uh, Washington Sundar again, and Root pushes it up to a deepish mid on, wants a single, sets off for one, but Ben Stokes says, nah, let's just, let's just go and have a gentle, relaxed lunch. But when I'm working with players, like I would go to them and say, I know you think this is a high productive shot for you, but actually you're averaging 14 doing it, so maybe you shouldn't be playing the shot anymore, or you need to you know, work with your coaches on how to fix it. Here is uh, Sundar once again, and uh, this time it will be a single because uh, Joe Root steers it past backward point, trot through for one. I believe if you're hitting with the spin, it's a great shot to be able to play, especially if there's no man back there. It's a free hit, especially with some of the size of the bats they've got these boys these days. Uh, and the boundaries are pretty short now. Even now in India, I would say the boundaries are not as big as some of the grounds uh, they would experience when they go to Australia. I think it's a productive shot. I really do. We are just two deliveries away from another wicketless session for uh, the home side as England have moved on to 3.55 for three. Stokes comes forward, pushes this defensively the mid on. I mean, it's worth saying that there is risk in every attacking shot in Test cricket. So I think you get dismissed every 38 balls playing an attack. No, sorry, must uh, yeah, 38 balls playing an attacking shot in Test cricket, whereas it's every 60 balls playing rotation or uh, defensive shots. So there's always risk there. Last ball of the session, and Ben Stokes comes forward and blocks it away resolutely up towards mid on. A dead bat defensive push, and England have had a very, very fine session. Resuming at 263 for three, they've taken the score to 355 for three with uh, Ben Stokes and Joe Root closing in on a century partnership after the double hundred partnership yesterday between Dom Sibley and uh, the England captain who's having a memorable 100th test match. Absolutely beautiful uh, cricket from uh, these two in contrasting styles. It has to say that uh, Joe Root's gone down from about fourth gear to second gear in the last hour that uh, Ben Stokes has uh, gone up through the gears uh, and is uh, flying along in uh, complete control of his game. I say that uh, a rest is uh, as good as many, many hours of uh, practice and uh, Ben Stokes is certainly well rested and he's looking like a man refreshed. England then 355 for three. I mean, you just, you couldn't have asked for any more in that session, could you? Brilliant session for England, and I think yeah, you got it spot on, Manners. I think for Ben Stokes to come to the crease and have that intent from ball one, it's allowed Joe Root just to bat and keep building his innings. And he was the one, uh, the aggressor, when Don Sibley was at the crease. And it's almost like the revolt. The roles have reversed, haven't they? And, and, and it's good when, when a team can do that. Communication. Uh, ben likes to come to the crease. He likes to attack spin. We've seen that in many innings he's played over the years. And Joe now has just gone back in his shell a little bit, just playing for Ben Stokes. And if one of them gets out, it'll be interesting to see because they've got Ollie Pope who can play either innings. Ollie Pope can come to the crease. He can either 
get dig in or he has, again can can attack the spinners Josh Butler is another guy who can do it so they're in a great position in England at this moment I'm just time. thinking about Josh Butler <laughs> how are India going to feel when he walks through the crease at 450 for four absolutely and I think this is the good thing about where England are at this minute in time at lunchtime lunchtime on day two there's going to be a lot of mental scars in that Indian dressing room and that's what England have now got to really ram home the advantage you say 355 for three they've got to really go in there after lunch and say to 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 the indian indian bowlers you're going to be here for another session you know we're going to start ele- you know, elevating the scoring rate and we're going to make sure that when you do come out to bat we're going to put pressure on you because this wicket is going to det- is going to keep deteriorating and that for me is the beauty about where england are at this minute yes the scores brilliant you know runs on the board no wickets not many wickets down England need to keep India on this surface, 160, 170 overs, because the, the wicket's only going to get worse, and that there is when England really come into play. So for me, it's, it is, yes, runs are important, but it's a length of time they're on the wicket, and England, have the three with only three and three down, they've got a great chance of being on this wicket for another 35, 40 overs, and that there could be invaluable for the back end of the game. Goffy, just everything's about perspective, isn't it? And, you know, the Indian perspective it, it means that the way they view the situation and their failure to take wickets won't be viewed in quite the same way by them as it is by, by England and by English supporters because Indian cricketers, they've been here before. They've, seen, oh, yeah. they've done this themselves, uh, you know, a hundred times with the bat. So they won't be panicking, I don't think. Oh, I would say definitely not panicking. Uh, we, we just talked about the last series when England were getting 400 and India went past them and got 550 and 600. So there will always be that positivity about the way they play. And if anybody's not seen Rohit Sharma play, the way he likes to attack. And when he gets in, he gets big scores. Virat Kohli speaks for itself. His averages, Rahan... Uh, the, the Runzis, Hamasim, Pajara these are fantastic players but England are in a great position India, it'll be interesting how they come out now because like I said I, I think now they've got to stop the, uh, the runs flowing, uh, they don't want to be in a position where England can declare at 500 and, and India um, j- in, come back again tomorrow England and, and they're still batting and only want to bat once so that's the position they're in it's whether they try and stop the run flow now because and, and wait for a dismissal they've got to get one of these two out because these two are magnificent players and they're both in great form 